Although I should just check. How is this levels wise, guys? Can you guys hear me clearly? Is this a good good amount of volume? Also, uh, when you see this, can you write something in chat or like when you hear my voice? So I'm going to say ping, and when I say ping, write pong. So ping. Good. Okay, so that's about four or five seconds. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure it's not like several minutes. And uh, hi, Andres. Uh, hi, Sam. Uh, I know a couple of these folks. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I know. I keep trying to do these earlier in the day, but it just doesn't pan out. Um, actually, I haven't done one of these in, I think, two years now because the whole YouTube, uh, uh, like, audio issues problem. Uh, I think... We're ready to go. I'll just let the timer run out. Hmm. Look like Zach is on a lot of latency. Oh, shoot. I want to get this. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming out to this live stream. I uh, just kind of did it over the last maybe week, decided I would start doing this. Um, the reason is about a couple months ago, I found out about this chip. It's the CH32V003. Uh, and it's it's 10 cents and it's a risk 5 microcontroller, 40 megahertz. It, it's a pretty competent chip, but it doesn't have USB. Um, well, yet. And the goal is to see if sometime between this live stream and maybe it'll take two or three, but to see if we can get it to talk USB. I actually have no idea if this is going to work. I have no idea a lot about this. Like, so it's going to be me exploring this with you guys. And so this whole live stream is going to be more about the process that I use when I develop firmware. Um, I hope you guys enjoy what we have going. Um, I did make a bit of an itinerary, so let's just jump right into that. Um, so the idea is that there are people that make software USB stacks. So for instance, ESP USB uh, was one that I wrote for an ESP8266, also a microcontroller that didn't have USB. It was a little bit more competent than the CH32V, but it still wasn't that fast. Um, um, and I wrote it for that. It was done entirely in software um, because you can cycle count on the ESP8266. You can't cycle count on the CH32V003 because of the way the DMA works. The DMA actually like is a higher priority than the processor even when you specify the, the DMA priority to be lower. Uh, the next one I wanted to mention was VUSB, which was a software Bitbang USB stack for really, really low-end uh, microcontrollers. Um, so those are like AVRs, and it could run as low as 12 megahertz. So like the processor itself could only run at 12 megahertz, and they got like software USB working on that. So I'm thinking even though there are some other limitations that we have, the fact that we have 48 megahertz and a 32-bit processor should be enough to make it so that we should be able to pull this off. And then the last one I wanted to call out was Granium, which was, it was specific for ARMs, but it, it was something where for 48 megahertz ARM processors, it was a software USB stack. Now, my primary goal of all of this is to take this little board right here and turn it into an Arduino uh, to make it so that you can just plug it in by USB right here and then start writing code for it and making it go. Um, and the idea there is that these little boards can be made really inexpensively and very simply, and it gets programmers started and comfortable with the idea of being able to program on RISC-V platforms. And I really like RISC-V. It's, it's kind of, uh, 
uh, it's kind of captured my imagination, the idea that there can be something that's community this late in the semiconductor game. Um, I guess the only other thought there is, oh, well, heck, let's just jump into USB. Um, so the first thing I wanted to, to point out was we'll only be doing USB low speed. So it does mean that you can't emulate a MIDI device, you can't emulate a sound device, and you can't emulate a serial port. Those are, now actually it's kind of funny, on all platforms except for Linux after kernel 4, you totally could because the OS didn't care, but for some reason in kernel 4 uh, on Linux, they just all of a sudden said, oh no, we'll follow the spec now and say, if you are a, a serial device, but you're low speed, we just won't, we just won't work. Um, so that's a little annoying. So it does mean that we'll have to enumerate as a hit device, but that that's fine. We can still transfer 1.5 megabits a second. That's still faster than, um, uh, uh, faster than fa plenty fast. Um, just wondering, is there anything going on with chat? Is that all good? Still good. Okay. Um, looks like we have 31 people viewing. Oh, hi TCL. Okay, good, good. I just hadn't seen any updates in it, so I was worried. Um, the next thing I want to mention is it's, so 1.5 megabits a second is more than enough to program the part, to debug the part, to do anything that you'd want to do practically. It's only 16 kilobytes of flash, so it's not like you'll be spending more than a second, if that, even flashing an entire part. Except you will be spending more than a second because it takes longer than that to flash the part. Like, USB low speed is not going to be the thing to slow us down here. Um, so USB is differential signaling, 3.3 volts. Uh, it's got weird bit stuffing rules. It's got a bunch of weird stuff where you have to also look for like where both lines are low, where it's not quite differential. There's a lot of things in the USB low level, um, but we'll try to work through all of them. We'll see if we can get it all done. I've done it once before. It took me, I don't know, probably a hundred hours the first time I did it. It's hopefully going to take way less time the second time I do it. Um, and so the idea is that it'll take an extra resistor. So uh, right here, I have a schematic of what this board is. And the idea is that just by populating these two resistors uh, with 33 ohms, they could just be a solid connection. And then R5 with a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor, we can then do everything we need to do in order to talk USB uh, without any hardware on the part. Uh, so there were a couple of approaches that I wanted to outline. Um, the first one was if we did pure GPIO DMA. Um, this was one that BitLooney recommended. Um, I'm not going to start with this one because uh, there is an issue with it that this part can only capture at 2.2 mega samples per second um, through the DMA. So that, that's eight bits at a time at 2.2 megahertz. Um, and so that means you have to use exactly 1.5 megabits for your sampling. And the problem is that the clock, the default clock behavior on this part is a little bit too loose for that. So I don't, I'm nervous about it. I think it could be made to work 100%, but that's trickier. And so I want to shoot for the simplest possible one first. Maybe sometime later we could do GPIO DMA. One of the really fun parts about this is it does mean that you could still be running a program while the USB is receiving a packet or sending a packet. Uh, the next one was uh, to use timer capture, um, and that's really complicated. There are some benefits over it, but it does mean that we have to have a dedicated timer, and I really don't want to require this stack to use stuff. I want this stack to live inside the bootloader and then unlock the whole rest of the part for you. Uh, we could use timer capture in DMA, and it's very similar, but still, again, requires the use of the timer. I'd rather not do it. You can leverage the OPA, but that requires an extra pin, and I'd really rather not make users do that. We could try to do it pure CPU, except that, as I mentioned, if the user is already doing DMA, it's going to just blow our timing, so we can't do that. Um, so what I'm going to try to do during this live stream is a mixed CPU only and this thing called SysTick, which is a, a hardware timer um, that can be shared amongst many features of the part. Um, and so the nice part about that is, is it requires no additional hardware. So like if you use this bootloader and you use this like an Arduino, you won't be giving anything up. You'll just be able to use the part as it is. And yeah, the only restriction is it does mean while it's processing USB packets, your code won't get executed. Um, that's probably fine, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. We'll find out. So um, the hardware that we will be using is GPIO, SysTick, HSI trim, because what we'll do is when we get uh, messages from the host that will tell us like what, what 
clock should be, we can actually trim the internal oscillator. So we can hopefully someday phase lock loop the internal processor's clock to the host clock, which is really fun because then you can get really precise timing on things. Uh, I hope to use the 1920-byte boot ROM because that's just free, and then the user has the whole flash, all 16 kilobytes to do with it, whatever they'd like. And we're going to start with uh, the 48 megahertz. So maybe someday it could work at 24. That's harder. If you have more clock cycles, you can just be lazier. So we're going to shoot for the easiest, simplest thing first. Um, let's see here. Anything in chat? Same as typical W10. Uh, focus one. Process of device enumeration. I will be talking a little bit about device enumeration because at the end of the live streams, however many this takes, the goal is um, make the part appear as a USB device that you can talk to. So we'll have to do enumeration with it. Um, and yeah, don't worry about being late. Um, I don't know. I guess people are still starting to roll in. It's only 30 people. So uh, yeah, so I guess let's get started. The first thing I did start with was I have here uh, a little RV003 USB. So this is going to be the project that I'm going to do with it. And uh, I believe I already have that checked out to a folder. Yeah, right here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a um, mm, let's put it in firmware, CD firmware. And then what I'm going to do is copy. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Actually, what I'm going to do is get uh, submodule add GitHub. Oh, I can't type right. Dot com, CNLore, CH32V, 3 fun. Um, so one of the other aspects of this is that I have this project, CH32V003 fun, which is a minimal SDK. So by using that, it'll unlock as much of the chip's potential as we can get so that we can start from a place of instead of having to have everything bubble wrapped around many layers of complicated like interconnects just so that it looks like simple code instead we're just going to be starting with CH32TV003 fun which gives us direct access to all of the hardware um, so I'm going to go into the firmware folder I'm going to copy um, examples blink let's get blink because that's that's how we should probably start um, and put it in here and then we're gonna have to uh, oh yeah I'm gonna have to edit the make file uh, how's the font size guys is that is the font size all right or is this too small is it hard to read uh, both terminal and this um, we're gonna name it um, RV03 USB. I'm guessing the font size is font size is readable on my end. Okay, um, so let's see. Starting happened at 15 minutes. Um, okay, uh, make clean all RM blink dot bin MV blink. Uh, RV03 USB.C. Uh, wait, why is that not right? CH. Oh, oh, it's an extra folder. CH32TV03 fun. Okay, that should work. Make clean all. What did I do wrong? Oh. Mmm. Yeah, let's look at that file. Uh, CH32TV fun. CH32TV fun. CH32TV fun. Dot MK. Uh, here we go. So we have to set this in our make file. So equals. Okay, let's give this a shot. Wait, did I mistype that? <sighs> mm, there we go. It's building. It built. Uh, Make C mini ch link. Okay, so I do have to move mini ch link into there. Okay. It's building. It's building mini ch link. And it says it flashed it. Ah, look at that. So if we look at the, the stream right here, 
if you look on the trying to poke point on how well it's coming through, you can see like the little LED down there is flashing. Um, and that little flashing LED means that blink is working. Um, RV32 USB.C. So we'll take a look at the dot C. Oh, this is actually going to be really bad. Uh, uh, let's stop this right now because it's going to be going on and off the bus. So I don't even know if I can get. Uh oh. Okay. Whew. Okay, let me show you what happened there. Um, uh, because. Uh, the pin, one of these pins, which one is it? Uh, it was D0 and D4. Uh, because this pin here was wired up to USB and it was blinking the USB pin, uh, my kernel got really mad. So, okay, that's... <laughs> um, yeah, uh, don't do that. Uh, so at any rate, now everything should be fine. Um, Okay, it identified that there is a, uh, whatever. It, it seems fine now. I think I can, like, if I say make, yeah, I can rebuild it and flash it. So everything is fine. Um, okay, so that's what a basic program on C32V003 fun looks like. We enable some GPIOs, we can blink LEDs, and we can run. Um, one of the other things I wanted to show here was I have a Sele connected. Um, actually, it's kind of a funny story. I have a real Sele. Um, right here, uh, except that I could not get it to work, and so now I'm using a janky, cheap Chinese knockoff, and the Chinese knockoff works perfectly. So anyway, that's I, I don't feel bad about using the official software because it does have better USB protocol decoding than, um, than SigRock, unfortunately. I don't feel bad about it because I do have access to a real Sele, uh, so I'm going to be using the, the knockoff anyway because that seems to actually function on my system. Uh, so what you can see here is the signal going low, then high, then low, then high. And what this is is I'm probing a bunch of pins. I'm probing PD3, PD4, PD5, and PC0. So you can see in here the signal going high and low to blink the LED. Now what that means is we can use, the, uh, use that to... Uh, uh, to do precise timing on things. So what we could do is actually like turn the pin low than high and low than high and do something and see how long that takes. So for instance, I could say set the pin high. So what this does is set pin high. And what this does here is set the pin low. And what we could do here is say um, ASM volatile um, nop 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 and what that'll do is it, the, the light will turn on it'll wait for a very short period of time it goes nop 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 and then the light will turn back off and so if we go run this code um, what we can see is the the light will oh I should probably also turn off the other delay because that would be really annoying to wait and so now you can see that the light looks like it's on a steady hum but if I click play here on uh, stop, what I can do is zoom in really far, and I can see roughly how long is the 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 LED on, and it's on between about 100 to 120 nanoseconds. Um, versus, if instead we only do nop nop, um, it should be a few nanoseconds less. Um, so if we say that, uh, so we're doing one less operation between turning the LED on and off. And so now it's 80 nanoseconds. Uh, it should be 80 to about 100, if I can think right. And the reason it's not more precise than that is just because I'm using the um, the, the Chinese knockoff Sele. Uh, so it's only able to sample at 50 me mega samples a second instead of much, much higher. Um, so that's going to be a little bit hard for us to try to figure out exactly what's going on with timing, but it should be fine. Uh, let me check the uh, uh, chat here. I'm curious how to know if those reasonably square viewed slopes blue. Oh, um, so there is some slope to them, but it's actually, it is pretty low. Um, I really wouldn't 
worry that much about it. For the sake of this video, we're operating at low enough speeds and with high enough currents and with a simple enough circuit that we don't actually have to worry about that. Um, although that is commonly a problem, that like many times it is beneficial to do analog. And by the way, it's not that this doesn't work, but it only captures for about one second and then stops. So that's kind of the, the trade-off. And I really, mm, I would rather be able to capture for much longer periods of time. Although it may make sense at some point, maybe we will go to that because I can do 500, this can do 500 mega samples a second and it can do analog, unlike the uh, the Chinese knockoff, which is much more limited. Although if I remember right, yeah, you can go up to 100 when you have fewer channels. So you can get more precision in that. So 80, 90, 80, 80, 90, 80. Yeah, so you get an idea. I wonder, can I average that? Is there a way? Uh, not that. Let's see. Can I measure? Mm, wrong button. Is it control G? No. Mm. Mm, I thought there was a way of finding the average on time. Maybe I'm misremembering. If anybody knows how to with the Sele software, uh, do the um, do the average on time that would be super cool oh is friday in the shot somewhere he went in the kitchen oh, okay so let's delete this for now um and let's get started uh so some of the things that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a pin change interrupt so whenever the pins go from low to high or high to low or maybe we'll figure out which one it is that we care about we want to trigger an interrupt um, and so what we're going to actually look up is USB in a nutshell. Uh, and USB in a nutshell is a really good guide for how to do all of this stuff. Um, so I'm going to go click on this and make it so it's a little bit, well, I don't think there's any hope of you guys being able to read it in detail. Um, but USB in a nutshell covers how USB works from the ground up. Um, and we're going to skip over a lot of that. Uh, we don't really care about the hardware. Also, it's kind of old because this is all USB A here and B, uh, but now we're on to USB C. But here's one of the things that matters. Uh, so if you are curious how USB can identify the difference between a full speed device and a low speed device, this is how. Um, and it's because there's these two resistors here and you don't actually need those 15K resistors. It's, it's fine, it's fine. We could actually probably use the pull downs in the part. Maybe we should. Oh wait, no, those are on the host anyway, so we don't even need it. The device doesn't need anything. Device needs a 1.5 kilo ohm pull up to 3.3 volts. And maybe at some point it would be fun to see, does it really need that? Maybe we could get away with using internal resistors. Um, and then you have those hooked up to D plus and D minus on the part. So I made it so that uh, D minus here, so if you look for a low speed device, D minus is connected to in this point, I can turn that on and I can say 3.3 volts so I can make the USB device go on or off the bus at will. And then these two wires are going to convert the, in, like, they're going to be the things where all the data flows. USB also is bi-directional over the same pins. So that's actually going to be sending and receiving over the same pin pair. Um, and then I think one of the things I mentioned before, 1.5 megabits, that's what we're going to be going for. And on average, the clock crystal has to be within, or the clock has to be within 1.5%. And actually we can measure that. Let's see how good is the clock right now. So let's go back and switch it back to 250 uh, uh, milliseconds. And let's, let's time it. And so I'm going to go in the Sele here. I'm going to click play and I'm going to stop and we're going to zoom out. And we're going to see how long are these. So it's 248 milliseconds for what should be uh, 250 milliseconds. So 250 minus 248.27 or 28 uh, divided by 250. And that says that, and let's do times 100. So that says that we're within, this is default. This is from the factory, no tuning, no nothing special. Uh, from the factory, we are within point six percent clock and so that does mean that we should be fine like even though there's no oscillator on this board this is all just an internal rc filter there's no extra parts um i think we'll be fine i think we can stay within plus or minus 1.5 percent and actually there's some tricks that we can do later to try to get it to within much much better than that um the next part on uh the uh 
beyond logic thing here is um, uh, the packets. So the idea is that with USB, what you end up doing is you, um, oh, let me see if I can find, uh, there are different like types of messages that you have um, and we'll only be implementing a small subset of them. So I think we'll only really be doing, um, we, we don't need start a frame because that's for high speed and full speed devices. Uh, we'll be doing setup. I think we have to do data, but I think that's it. I, oh, no, we also have to do ACK. We have to do ACK. Um, and maybe we'll need an ACK. But other than that, we don't need any of the other stuff. We also don't need to do interrupt endpoints to begin with. We can do everything over um, over uh, control messages. So it should be pretty simple. Um, also, I really have to, it's hard for me to keep looking over here for the chat. Can I pop this out? I guess you guys probably can't see this. I hope you can't. Oh, actually, I guess, yeah, you should be fine. I could keep the chat right here. Oh, no, Friday. Friday. <laughs> uh, I would love to bring him in the video, but I have a feeling he's going to be... Um, okay. Uh, and it's going to be the... the oh, I, I should mention. So the platform is the CH32V003, but my goal is for it to be on any RISC-V processor that's sufficiently fast and has the system clock. So the system clock will be able to be the thing that keeps us like locked uh, in time and will just have to be fast enough to operate. And so maybe this would work on basically any RISC-V low-end part if everything goes well. Um, it doesn't get much lower end than uh, 10 cents. Um, okay, so there's a bunch of different packet types, that sort of stuff. We aren't going to be getting into this quite yet, but we will before we, we really get going. Um, let's see. Uh, does this cover? No, okay, so I'll have to just Google images this. Um, USB low speed. Uh, so just so you guys have an idea as to what this looks like, uh, we'll just do oscill Oh, hey, here we go. Look at that. That's a great diagram. Um, so what we'll be looking for is an event of when the pin goes from high to low or low to high. Um, and I'm thinking the actual one we care about is going to be uh, D+. Plus. Um, that's probably the best one because what that would let us do is capture this thing called a um, EOP, which is where in, where the both the D plus and D minus line are low for two clock cycles. And the reason behind that is that what happens is for low speed devices, that happens at every millisecond. And so that'll be a mechanism that we can use to get the parts uh, clock really well. So let's go with D plus. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a new interrupt. And actually what I'm gonna do is crib from uh, CH32V003 fun examples, uh, pin change GPIO here at this one. Um, and we're going to go copy paste this interrupt into our code. Um, and for D, which one was it? D plus? Yeah, D plus. Um, we are going to have D plus is hooked up to PD3. So what I'm going to do is hook up the EXTI interrupt handler to PD3. Um, oh, wait, maybe it already is on PD3. Let's see here. Uh, it says GPIO3. Oh, hey, check out it out. The example is already on the correct GPIO, so we don't even have to worry about it. Um, so yeah, we'll just copy that. Uh, let's see, are we missing anything? Oh, we need the AFIO turned on. So I'll turn on the AFIO and uh, C0 is already set up as output. Um, mm, pause, little, uh, what does mm, pause mean? Oh, 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 I'm pausing because I'm thinking and I, I'm trying to be active here with this and keep you guys entertained, but um, okay. So there's a bunch of notes about which types of interrupts are possible, but I want to see if we can do it using the BOG scan standard, everything normal, nothing complicated version. Let's see how that goes. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is put this here and I'm going to write a little note. Um, so port D3 is 
D3 is D plus, port D4 is D minus, and port D5 is DPU. Um, so it means we're also going to have to drive DP5. So um, let's see here. Four, so okay, yeah, this is a little bit weird. Uh, so this one makes it so we can still program the part interactively. This one here is setting up GPIO3 as, ooh, that's wrong, three. Yeah, three, let me fix that in the demo. GPIO3, uh, actually, I'm gonna go fix that right now. I, Uh, uh, oh, this is fun. Uh, examples diff. Okay, yeah, let me fix that. Git commit. Oh, I don't have Git hooked up to this account for committing. I'll have to figure that out. Hmm. Mm. Mm, we'll do that later. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to be doing three as input. We should be doing four as input as well. And five is going to be output because that's going to be the one that we, we go on bus with. Mm. And this is going to be... GPIO5, and that's going to be output. Uh, also, let me fix this to use tabs. Oh, okay, good. Uh, anyway, oh wait, I shouldn't have done that. I'm in the wrong file. Okay, here, now I'm in the right file. Mm, C. D, uh, yeah, let's just do that. For input pin change, uh, we're gonna be attaching to GPIO3, X3, okay, that all looks correct. Um, oh yeah, let's also make sure. Okay, I don't need to bore you guys with whacking the space bar all the time, I can just press tab. Um, anyway. Uh, we're going to be using the internal HSI oscillator, so we don't need any extra crystal or extra parts. We have GPIOC as output. Um, sure, let's just give this a shot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, uh, I'm going to twiddle GPIOC at the regular clock rate, but I'm also going to say I'm going to twiddle GPIOC when we have USB events. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm gonna say GPIO D arrow BSHR is equal to one five. And what this will do is this drives GPIO five high, which will let us, GPIO five high, which will tell the host that we are going on bus. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Oh, I wanna record this too, so. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Okay, make. Oh, oh no. Oh, interesting, so that didn't work. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, there we go, look at that. Okay, stop. Mm, that's concerning. Hmm. So we are getting events whenever it looks like this rises, we get an event here. This rises, we get an event here. This rises, we get an event here. But that's that's channel zero. How is that connected? Channel zero is hooked up to PD3 something backwards D plus something might be backwards 
d plus pd3 dpu d minus hmm Mm. Uh, device class, uh, oh, 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 uh, HID. I plan to implement HID. HID is really cool because you don't need drivers to talk to it. Like on Windows, if you put in the right things from user space, absolutely no drivers, no installation. Windows is like, oh, gotcha, sure, hands off. I'll let you go just use that as an app, no problems. Linux, most systems have the plug dev group, although I just found out that's not really true. Most users have gr groups have plug dev, but apparently hid raw is not in plug dev by default. Who knew? Um, but yeah, no, it'll be a hid class device, but it does also mean you could turn this into a joystick or keyboard or anything else like that as well. But I'll be using it mostly to be able to flash it as an Arduino. Um, I want to be able to use this part as an Arduino entirely on USB. Um, so I'm a little bit confused here though, because this is low. I'm hmm. I'm not sure what to make of this. Um, why is this low and this high? Zero and one. Um, did I mismark something? PD3 is hooked up to PD3. PD4 is PD4. PD4 is D minus. PD3 is D plus. D plus, I put the resistor in, goes to D plus. D minus, put the resistor in, goes to D minus. Um... I'm not sure why this is backwards. I'm not gonna spend much longer on it, I guess, but... Hmm. Hmm. Well, sure, let's just go switch it to PD4 or something. Uh, four is D plus and three is D minus? I, I really... Wait a minute, is that one of those like weird things where if you flip the USB cable around? I don't think so. No, it's still, mm, I'm not really sure what's going on there. I, I am honestly very confused. Uh, well, something's backwards. Let's not worry about it and move on with our lives. Um, so channel one is the thing that we're going to trigger off of because we want to get these EOPs. So that's actually one of the fun things I mentioned was um, these EOPs here are come out at exactly one millisecond speed. And so you can see that like it's like 99.96 microseconds between each one of these. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure why the why the two are flipped, but we'll have to figure that out because it, it will matter. Like we can't just trigger off of anything. I guess we could trigger off of anything someday. That wouldn't be that hard to add in. Uh, for now though, let's just flip it and just hope for the best. Okay, so three times three times that has to be four, 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 four. Uh, maybe that's it. Let's give it a shot. Oh, thank you. Friday is being a little turd. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's try this. 
Okay. Ah, uh, so this is wonderful now. Okay, so here is the EOPs, and what this means is, you can see here, the transition goes from low to high, and then we trigger. And really what we're gonna wanna do is go from high to low. That's gonna be the transition that we care about. Um, so let's go switch that. So rising edge trigger, let's go look at the data sheet for this. Um, not the data sheet, we care about the reference manual, here we go. Uh, let's get this on screen. Oh yeah, I'll rename, that's a really good idea, Halsig. Um, I will I will rename the things on the, uh, yeah, 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 I'll do that. Uh, okay, so uh, enable rising. So we don't want rising, we want falling. So we'll use this register here. Um, so we'll do falling edge trigger, okay. Make, go back to scope. Uh, let's go say start. Okay, it's doing its thing, and we're gonna stop, and we're gonna take a peek. So, what do we have going on here? Uh, boop. boop. Actually, uh, I guess we can't do that. Uh, come on. So it looks like the interrupt takes around 500 nanoseconds to trigger, which is actually a really long time, but. I mean, I don't know. I think we got a little bit of time to go because what we have what we have with USB is there's a preamble. And so all that matters is you catch the preamble before it's over and then you look at the end of the preamble and then now you're fine. So we actually have um, uh, six divided by 1.5. So we have four microseconds, which is 4,000 nanoseconds to go figure out what's going on. I think 500 nanoseconds is fine for this. Um, okay, so we have here, yep, Friday, do you wanna? Oh, okay, I'll wait a minute. If he comes over here though, I'm going to totally snag him for some <laughs> brownie points of people. Um, anyway, point is our interrupts are firing, everything is fine. Um, you can see here uh, on the falling interrupt, boop, it's hitting our thing right here exactly as it should. So let's do this. We're gonna call this D plus, although I'm honestly confused right now. Um, this one is D minus. Uh, channel two, what is channel two hooked up to? It's hooked up to a PD5, which I don't think we really have to like monitor because it's just gonna turn on. Who cares? Yeah, let's just stop monitoring that. Do we get any more speed then? Ho ho ho, we get 100 megabit then. Let's give this a shot. Oh, we don't get 100 megabit, do we? No, we don't really get 100 megabit, I didn't think so. Do we get 80? Hey, we get 80. Okay, excellent. Take a look at this wonderful stream here. So, that's interesting. Okay, so if we were really clever, we might even be able to do things that would happen like on the interrupts, but really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it so that on the first falling edge, we're gonna start our function and we're gonna start doing work. Um, so the first thing I wanted to mention was because the clock on this, like the instructions per clock is not stable, we're going to have to, uh, to use, as I mentioned, the sys clock to, uh, to be able to like, make everything work, uh, like time-wise, be able to time everything. Um, and so we will, uh, there's an extra function for this. Um, if I open up 32 b 3 fun in the header file, is it sysTick? Yeah, it's this tick. Ah, uh, here we go. So by default, I think CH32V003Fun uses H clock divided by eight, but we want as best timing as we can possibly get. So I'm gonna go use SysTick use H clock. Um, and we go put that up here, pound to five. SysTick use H clock, and we're also gonna do 
this so we can set the sysTick up to use h clock right here um, and let's see I guess we want to set a printf let's also do that so we can printf back to the host even though this is like real time we we probably don't we probably won't be using printf very much because everything has to happen with such precision. We definitely won't be using the debugger, um, uh, but I'm, I'm still gonna do that just so that we can get set up with it in case we do wanna printf. Um, like for instance, we could count the number of interrupts that have happened or something like that. I'm just gonna make sure like I can do printf hello and let's see if this actually works. Uh, make, oh, uh, it would be make monitor. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, so good, that just worked. Um, the number of things that have just worked on this live stream has been um, better than most. Um, Chu A, I just realized, the Stepmania dev guy? Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, I have not worked on Stepmania in almost 20 years, so <laughs> it has been quite some time. Uh, anyway. So we are here, we wanna go figure out what is happening. So we can get access to the, the clock, to the system clock, and that happens through, let's look at how the delay function works. Um, oh, it's, oh, it's right here. That happens through this. So this count right here starts at zero, counts up at 48 megahertz, and just keeps going. And if it wraps around, because it goes all the way up to two to the 32, which is like four billion something, it goes wraps around to zero and keeps counting up. And there's some really neat tricks that you can play with that. For instance, like if you subtract any two 32-bit timestamps, uh, it will always just work correctly. Like if you use a signed number, so if you take you know this time minus this time, even if it wraps around, it'll still give you exactly the right amount of time between these two times, even if you overflow. So like. 4 billion is your start time and 23 is your stop time. Um, we can compute that. Let's go switch to programmer mode. So if 4 billion is our, 4 billion blah, 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 is our start time and our stop time, which we would say is like seven minus that. So let's just say seven. Well, that's this really crazy big number, but what actually happens is this gets, like you truncate off the front boatload of bitch bits uh and oh actually this is a really bad example uh for now just believe me that this will work exactly correct with with all with all overflows sure i'll explain that some other time maybe uh or we'll probably explain it during the rest of this live stream uh so right now we have ext 70 irq handler in here um, why not port the USB? Uh, cause I want to just do this from scratch. I want to be able to have a live stream and show you guys, uh, how all of this is done. Um, 32T start time is that. Uh, also we can't directly port V USB anyway, because like all of the Phi stuff at the low level is completely different. Also V USB is really geared for AVRs. It's not really geared at all for anything else. Um, uh, anyway, uh, so we still want to trigger GPIOC so we can see something happened. We got an interrupt. Cool. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to be able to have some way of timing exactly 1.1 1. 1 over 1.5 mil. Okay. I want to first find the edge of when the event happened. Okay, how about we try that? Um, so what we'll do is to look at the value. Uh, it is, um, is it NDR, BCR? No, it's, Input data register in DR. Okay, so what we'll do is inside our interrupt, it'll be GPIOD arrow ender. Um, ooh, we should pound to find these. 
Oh, there is one other trick I am going to be using, which is D plus and D minus have to be right next to each other. Um, uh, USB start bit is three. Uh, so, and pound define USB port is or is GPIOD. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to say, uh, so we know that this is going to be on the rising interrupt, lower, lower falling interrupt. So what we'll do is I'll say while uh, GPIO D arrow ender and um, there is no IDE. This is just a text editor. Um, uh, while GPIO D arrow ender and one what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna wait a little bit and then I'm gonna go set this timer so I'm gonna say wait time is going to be uh, the current time minus the start time just to see how long this loop is going to run for um, and so let's go print that out every 500 milliseconds and see what that works out to oh sorry make Oh yeah, that's right. It wants to be LU. Hmm. 11. Oh, it's also really weirdly slow. Maybe I need to add a timeout. So what I will do is I will say you int 32t equal to sysTick minus start time if ooh, 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 I could set timeout here you and 32 T timeout it's going to be start time plus uh, what's a good timeout if we're doing I think eight bit times eight at 1.5. So it's that many microseconds, that many microseconds times 48, 200, oh, that works out beautifully. I love it when math just happens to work out. So 256, um, that'll be when we give up. So if that minus timeout, if T, actually we'll just do this, if Stop adding parentheses on me. How do I turn that off? Is there not an option to turn off? How do I turn off the... There we go, bracket completion. Anyway, then we're going to break. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Mm, still suspiciously slow. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's fine. Let's see here. What is it actually doing? Uh, let's go look at it on the scope. Unplug, replug. Try that again. Unplug. Oh, come on. Please run. No, it's not going to run. Let's try 50. Unplug. This is not good. Let's try unplugging and replugging.
Oh, hey, Parker Reed. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the super, uh, the super chat. I really appreciate it. Yep. Oh, awesome. And yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm finally streaming again after like two years. No, something is not good. Hmm. Sure, let's just try swapping back to the other side. Okay, let's see if we can capture a little bit more time on this one. Okay, it looks like we can at least capture a little bit, so let's just hook this one up. Okay, let's give this a shot. Okay, well, that's working now. It was not earlier. Uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look. So, so far, it looks like it's taking exactly 24 cycles between the start and when it triggers. <sighs> That's concerning. 24 is a really long time. Um, I don't know if, how this is gonna work then. Uh, am I a full-time YouTuber? No. No, I, I make uh, very, very little money from YouTube. Um, hmm. Why is this so slow? Let's take a look at the assembly that's going on here. Uh, wait, why is it? Why are these getting included? Oh, because the printf. Okay, well, that's fair. Uh, so what we're looking for is this function. And we're gonna go look at the assembly code for it and figure out why is this thing so slow. So here we get the current time. We load it into Where do we get that from? Oh, so it's still doing other stuff then. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at the loop anyway and see what we're missing. So, load upper immediate, that address, load word, A4. So I'm not really sure what that's, I think that one is the one that's getting it from GPIOD. Then we and with, okay, then we and with the start bit. And then we say, if this is wrong, then we branch out. Uh, otherwise, if the TO is timeout, so then we load a 
four from eight a five, which is. Oh, whoa, that's weird. It's. It's doing that twice. For some reason, it thinks it has to do this. Maybe it's because this is a volatile. So let's get rid of that line. Let's also put a memory um, volatile uh, colon, colon, colon memory so that it knows that it has to do that. So it should be much less now, and we'll actually get some real numbers. 18. OK, so that's better, but that's still not great. That's still pretty slow. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, now that this code is a little bit more sane. So this loads the start time. OK, so this gets the start time. Uh, this adds the start time. It's a little bit weird. It does it in that order. And then we get a 4 from 103 a 2. I think that, that gets GPIOD. So that gets in DR. Uh, and we end it, so yeah, so A4 is is the value of pin D, like the whole register, and then A4 is that value, so we end it with 8, so the idea is now we're only looking at PD3, and so I say it branch if branch equal to 0, so if it's low, then we jet out, and then we load the timer value and we see branch if equal to oh we shouldn't do that oh that's dangerous okay whoopsies that should be branch if greater than okay uh, so back over to the code what I really want to do is I want to say if the system to count minus the timeout has exceeded uh, zero so if it's if if it is if it is in the future, otherwise what would happen is, like we'll be running and then we'll miss the tick and it'll tick over and then we will have not gotten timed out. So let's give this a shot again. Oh, um, Evan, it's not GCC S. It's it's this command right here. It's uh, uh, obj dump dash capital S the L file, and you can route that into an LST file. Uh, so uh, every time I say make, it builds an LST file, a map file, the bin file, and a hex file. Um, okay, so it's still 18, which is fine. Okay, but that's still a lot of cycles. Why is that so long? Um, we don't, do we have 18 cycles? Let's see here. 48 divided by 18. 2.6 megahertz, eh, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. Anyway, um, so let's see, what does this look like now? Okay, let's stop. Okay, so this is when the interrupt hits. A bunch of, we're just kind of waiting and chilling. And then we actually go execute our code here. We probably will want to do one more thing, which is detect an EOP, which is if when we hit the interrupt, both of our things are, how about that? Let's let's detect that right now. Uh, so I'm going to, let's start by saying if, um, Well, there's some things there where this could get false triggered. Mm, ah, whatever. Let's just hope for the best and see what happens. Um, so if this, if 3 and that is equal to 0, then it's an EOP. So for an EOP, let's just make it so that's the only situation where you would blink. Uh, and so EOP, and then we'll just return. OK, let's give that a shot and see what that looks like. OK. 
Uh, we are never getting triggered on an EOP, it looks like. So something's wacky here. Oh, I know what happened. We need to acknowledge the interrupt up here. Okay. Uh, Lady Ada, uh, one of the nice things about uh, doing the math this way is that wraparound is always handled completely and perfectly. So like for instance, if you delay um, and you're, you have a target end and then you use an in, a signed integer and you subtract the current time minus your target, it will also wrap around the, the math for comparing. So wraparound will always work correctly. Uh, as long as you're doing unsigned for your timestamps and signed for your comparisons. And that also has the added benefit of never like missing something because like an interrupt happened at the wrong time. Um, int32 is not always more than zero. Int32 is only more than zero if it's positive. Um, un uint32 is when it can flip negative. Um, so I'm acknowledging it now. Oh, it doesn't like this. Oh, oh yeah, 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 that's fair. I should totally, oh no, Friday. Okay. I'm sorry guys, you can't see Friday. He keeps like dodging in and out of uh in and out of sight here. Okay. Uh let's see. Unplug, replug, and let's see if we get some messages here. Okay. So this looks good. Now there's a problem. We shouldn't be tr Oh, hey. This is right. So this is fun. Um remember how I mentioned the EOPs that happen every so often? Um, uh, uh, so this, this right here, the, um, this is an EOP. These happen once every millisecond. Um, uh, sorry, Lady Ada, to, com to, to point out it's, um, it's, it's your comparison. So your UN32 goes inside the parentheses. And so if it is larger than 2 billion, then it wraps around to be negative two billion. So like both of the um, both of the overflows cancel out, and so it'll still work correctly. Uh, oh oh okay okay sorry I didn't mean to. Oh I see what you're saying. Okay sorry I I, I read the most recent message and then I had to like go back and look back a little bit. Um, anyway. <sighs> So now we are correctly detecting EOP. So here's the fun thing that, that I, I didn't think about. I was like, uh-oh, we're getting these messages in the middle of data packets. At the end of all data packets, there's an EOP, which means end of packet, duh. And that's what's happening here. So our EOP detection is working perfectly, it seems. I'm, I'm quite excited by that. Um, so like I saw this here and I was worried, but nope, that's correct because there were three data packets that happened here. So one, two, three. So let's leave this as is, um, but to do, what we'll do here is use this to help us tune the oscillator frequency, frequency with HSI trim. Uh, doo -doo -doo, good, good, good. Uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, yes, so the reason I'm using the Sele software instead of uh, SigRock or PulseView, or SigRock with PulseView, because they're separate pieces, um, is because the USB protocol decoding inside the Sele is slightly better than PulseView's USB decoding. Um, okay, so now what we are with down here is we are going to want to start decoding our packets. Um, so the first thing that we get is we have this thing called a preamble, which is just, I'm trying to exactly, I wanna get this right, and I wanna bring this up on beyond logic here so I don't get it wrong. Um, do they say what it is? I wanna make sure I don't say the wrong thing here. Uh, pre, ah, oh, they don't say. Oh, it's sync. Sync field is eight bits long at low speed, 30 bits for high. Uh, 
the last two in that's not what I want to see it's oh this is fine this one will do so it's zero 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 so that's how many that's one two three four five six seven zeros and a one and that that will be what indicates to us that we are ready to rock and roll um Mm, okay, uh, and the idea though with, with USB, I forgot to mention this, the whole differential protocol, is that a one is indicated by the value staying the same, and a zero is in, in, like indicated by the value flipping upside down. Um, and so the idea is, uh, if we see it being a one, or if we see the value not changing, that's a one. If we see it flip, that's a zero. But there's this one other really annoying thing called bit stuffing. Where, surely this is on here somewhere. Um, I guess they don't talk about exactly how that works here. Um, uh, the point is that with USB, if you have a run of, I believe it is six ones in a row, which would mean like the line would stay low for a really long time, it forces the line to flip that next bit, which is really annoying to implement in software because it means things don't line up great, but that's, that's fine. <laughs> Let that sink in. <laughs> um, anyway. So what I think, I, I think it's okay for us to do this. I think I want to clean this up a little bit. I want to do something a little bit more clever here where um, what I can do is I can, I, I want to minimize the latency on we, we get on these bit flips. Um, and so uh, what I really want to do is I want to make it so So looping takes time and checking to see if we're bit is, is set it takes time and checking for timeout takes time. But checking for timeout isn't crucial at the moment. Like it's okay if we have a few extra um uh uh wait, uh details on USB. Should I Google this right now? Uh Jan Axelson's USB complete. Is that a book or is that like a, a web thing? Um uh anyway. I want to actually check twice per loop. So um, what I can do is I can write this as a do while loop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if inder break break. Um, and then what this will do is it means that it's going to spread the amount of time when it could flip on, on each side. Um, yeah, USB itself is pretty deep, but like as far as like the number of hacks that are stacked on top of each other, but it's fine. Like USB 1.1 is a pretty great simple protocol. Um, uh, Zenith, I was using, um, I literally don't know. It's just a complete Chinese knockoff. Uh, I was using, now I'm using the real one, but this is what I was using a moment ago. Um, Anyway, sorry, got to think through this. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to... We don't really want to time out. How do we want to do this? It's going to be... Oh, that's right, to sync up. So the idea is like this is for the very first like sync part. So what, when we get into this interrupt, um, we don't know how long uh, the main program took on the oh, no. <laughs> wait can I get him over here yeah. mm. uh oh did I just oh I didn't get it there's a flea on him We want to say hi to Friday. Good boy. 
Okay, so we don't know how long the main program took on the instruction. Um, oh, everybody's saying hi Friday. <laughs> Aw. You're a good boy here. Let's put you up here. I don't know how long he's going to take that. Not very long, apparently. Um, took on the instruction. So we synchronize uh, here. And I don't really know which way we want to synchronize. It really doesn't matter which way we synchronize as long as it's an edge. Whatever, let's just pick this edge and roll with it. So let's just see what this assembly code looks like and see what comes out of it. Aw, oh, thanks, I love scotch. Um, okay. Go. Oh no, now this is giving me trouble. Okay, let's see here. Uh-oh. Uh oh yeah, these are those EOPs that are getting hit. Although I'm surprised that, is this just not an, somehow that, that got missed somehow. Oh, maybe it was still working. Oh, maybe it was still answering the other interrupt. Anyway, not worried. Uh, so, what I really am going to do here is I'm going to go move this down here. Let's go. So hopefully what we'll see is some level of synchronizing. So the time between here and, well, that's actually almost perfect. Uh-oh, that's not good though. This time is not. Hmm. There should theoretically be stability. Oh, this is just bad. This is just bad. Four sixty five. Yeah, that's not good. Hmm. Hmm. I am concerned. So what I'm trying to do is I want to be able to get synchronized with the clock. What I want to do is I want to have a, um, no, I'm definitely acknowledging, I think I'm acknowledging it. Here I'm acknowledging it and well, I'll be darned. That's thank you so much, Manny. I would have I would have sat at this for quite some time. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. Oh, it's still compiling. All right. Let's zoom in. Let's see if this is better timing now. So what I want to do is I want to be able to very precisely measure the time relative to something else. Oh, look at this. This is, well, that's a little weird. I don't know what happened there. Uh, actually, this is all sus. This should never happen. Uh, something is really wrong. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if we can see a pattern in this. 
I don't understand how a rising edge could trigger this, though. Uh, I am physically uh, unplugging it and plugging it back in to force it to, uh, to enumerate. Um, I'm really confused, because what this should be looking for is this should be looking for any time indur is 1 is when it should break. Maybe... Maybe I should do it the other way around? Or better yet, let's just do it both ways. Uh, well, if inter is not one, inter is not one, let's see if this works. My laptop is getting really spicy right now. Like, very, very hot. Okay, let's give it a shot. Zoom out here. Zoom back in. Let's see if we are synchronized with something now. So I think right now what we should be synchronized to is is the falling edge. So if this is zero, this is zero, then we break. So yes, we should be synchronized to the falling edges, but this isn't. What is going on here? This is synchronized to the rising edge. Falling, 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 but janky, not falling, 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 falling. Is there something? Did I miss? What is? Let's make this really big. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what would be chewing up cycles, though. Uh... Falling, falling, rising. What, what is going on with this code? It is probably directly easier to write this in assembly right now. I'm just, I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to do it in C at least a little bit, but I can't even get this to work right. Why is a rising edge That shouldn't be possible. <sighs> Let's only flip if there's not a timeout. You can ask things out loud. Uh, yes, the replay, uh, I'm, I'm going to be making the replay public. Uh, and actually, because we're not doing audio on this live stream, I can make the replay public immediately after the, uh, immediately thereafter. Okay, so the answer is we're always timing out. Why are we always timing out? So if SysTick blah 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 is less than zero, which means we haven't timed out, Oh, parentheses use. Okay, fine. That's... Ugh. 
Who was it that was just uh, uh, saying uh, something about uh, overflows biting them? That just that's what bit me here. Okay, so let's fix that. The in thirty two is what you typecast the whole thing to. Oh, is that a bee? No. Oh no. Uh, uh, where'd it go? It's under the table. Under the table? <laughs> where? It just went under here. It's pretty, oh, it's up here by a computer. Okay. It's loud. <laughs> that's not a bee, that's a... Hornet? I think so. Holy cow, it's it's so Can you loud. open the window? Oh, yeah, yeah, keep yeah. it open, keep it, keep it, keep it. Go, go. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, guys. There was a uh, there was a bee. <sighs> okay, let's try that now that we fixed that. Oh yeah, one oh seven three. We were just always overflowing. <sighs> USB. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see if we aren't overflowing now. Okay, we are not. Now let's zoom in and see if our things are actually synchronized like they should be. So that's not really synchronized, although I guess they're synchronized. Why? What? Ender USB start bit. Uh, oh, that's right, because D plus and D minus are flipped. Why are D plus and D minus flipped? Uh, I don't think they can be flipped on the cable. I don't even know. Friday. <laughs> you want to be on the stream again? You're going to be annoyed? <laughs> hmm. There we go. Hmm. Good boy. You should practice with you up here so you can do that more often. <laughs> yeah, I guess this cat is going to take over now. Um, so we are going to... Oh yeah, I want to make sure that these are all synchronized. Um, so I'm not sure why it's the rising edge. It's it is, it is synchronizing to the falling edge here, which makes sense. And so these are all pretty good. Let's look at the rest of them and make sure that they're all synchronized. So this right here should be about the same for every one of these. So 527. 529, five, that's fine, that's close enough. 488, yeah, these are all pretty good, okay. Um, We're gonna call that four for now and figure that out later. What are people saying? Um, <laughs> I don't know how to read it. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, that is some technical <laughs> stuff. Uh, still something wrong with delay SysTick. SysTick would be close to overflow and small plus n will overflow it. Let's say SysTick is max minus three and n equals eight, target equals two, and the function will exit on the while comparison. Um, I don't think so. Um, max minus three. I mean, okay, let's let's just go into this because you know maybe I'm wrong here, but this is this is how I've coded it for years. So uh, max minus three, n is five. So okay, let's get out the calculator. Uh, so that would be two thirty-two. Oh, uh, two, wait, why didn't that work? 
32. Oh, whatever, I'll just click the button. That, so it's minus three was your example. And then n equals five. So that would be, uh, so CNT is this plus five is that, but what it really is, is this is two. So then what we're comparing is, uh, is this number, uh, this number minus Arg end is two. So that's a really big negative number. And then exactly one, two, three, four, five instructions later, this is going to become zero. And so it won't be less than zero anymore and it's going to expire. So no, DSD, I think that the math is correct. Um, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, uh, Systicc will always be incrementing, uh, uh, Kristen. Uh, and DSD, I think this is the simplest it can get. I don't think that there is a simpler... Uh, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think that that's as simple as it can get. Um, anyway, uh, so we synchronize here. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to start a timer, basically like... And then we're going to see how long until there's a transition and stop it and see what happens. So, um, what I'm going to do is uh, bit time. We're going to just call this bit time now. Uh, so, so instead of start time, we're going to call it bit time. Okay. Um, and actually, what we're going to do, uh, yeah. We want one more value called now. Qint32t now equals that. Okay. Now. Mm, now is then. Uh, now minus bit time. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I mean, I, I think that the math is right on that. I, I've, I've used it for a very long time. Um, yeah, in general, I find that as long as you think through the overflow on all of them, there's no issues with it. Like, like if you think through the overflow, the overflow is not a problem. But it does mean that, like, don't just immediately jump to, like, a UN64T and then, oh, by the way, that actually will overflow because of, like, really high speeds or whatever. Like, just... If you think about an overflow and make your stuff work out with overflows, there's no need to do extra, uh, extra work. Um, oh yeah, thanks, thanks, Bluff McBluff. Uh, yeah, I've been, I really like real small microcontrollers. Anyway, uh, now is this the current time? The wait time is now minus the bit time. Um, so that's just will be debugged in main, um, and. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to do our main loop sort of thing. Uh, do, um, main bit loop. So what we're going to do here is something very similar to this. Oh, could we do... Maybe we can simplify these two things, but what I, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, And let's actually make this much bigger. Okay. Okay. Goodbye, Catherine. Mm 
Okay. Bit time is now minus. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll figure out how to say these better later. 32t last time equals now. Um, and bit time is the wrong one. Bit time is now minus last time. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, so random dude, the reason I want to do the if condition twice in the loop is so that the latency on either one of these operations is lower. So the idea is I want to check. Okay, it's still not, not, not satisfied. Okay, well, let's see if we've timed out. Okay, we haven't timed out. Okay, well, let's just check again. Is it satisfied? No. Okay, well, let's do the loop. And the idea is that both the loop and checking to see if the timeout is satisfied are things that could take a little extra time. And so by checking twice, we minimize the amount of jitter that we'll have in when while we're sampling. Um, bit time is that, bit time is that. Um, okay, so uh, while one. Oh, actually, we can say while. Now minus that is zero. Okay. So ideally, after each one of these, we'll have a little bit of breathing room. So this will be each one of the transitions. Um, detect and uh, so this is a low to high transition. And then this one will be detect a high to low transition. Okay. Um, we might be able to do something trickier, though. Like we and off, hmm. Mm. For okay, for right now, let's just do it the dirty way. There, there, uh, to do. Can we use the timer interrupts flags to? detect a transition. So someday we'll probably go back and fix that up, but right now we won't. Um, uh, and so I'm going to write a function called handle bit time, bit time. Handle bit time, bit time. OK. Yeah, sure, let's do this. Right now, I'm gonna have this function. Um, you okay? Yeah. Okay. So here, we'll just wanna transition every time. We don't have to check anything. Let's just see how this goes. Uh, start time. Oh, uh, line 40. Um, now. Oh, yeah, let's let's look at the, the probe output. So this should get every single bit, every single time we have a transition. It looks like it is. This is wonderful. Every single bit is accounted for. Or every single transition, not every single bit. Um, though this is much more latency than I was hoping for. Um, I don't know. I guess we don't really know what the real latency is. Like some of this could just be like it taking extra time to turn on the pin than whatever. Uh, you know, this is probably fine. Um, it's a little bit sloppy though. Like, why is that so long there? That's 
That's a little sloppy. Sloppy. Which ones are the sloppy ones? Who? One, two. That's really short. That's correct. That one looks a little long. What is the difference on these? 162. 392, 247, these aren't great. This is a little rough. 365, yeah, this is, this is subpar. Oh, hey, Max, thanks. Yeah, the, uh, the diagrams will look really great. Uh, hope you can finish soon and sleep well. Uh, no, this is not related to bug printf, although that would be kind of fun, adding printf back through the USB. Um, so you need no programmer or no external programmer and you can printf. So yeah, I'd love to add that, but right now, uh, not, not quite there. 230. Why are these so drunk? Ugh. Like this should be a much more steady interval. Um... Hi, Mosseler. Um, maybe we should write this in assembly. Let's see what the assembly code is, and then maybe we can figure out what GCC is doing that's suboptimal. Hmm. Wow, that really does look kind of gnarly. Load and die, branch not zero, exit. Okay, so that's a load, an and, and a branch. Checking for timeout is a load, a sub, a branch. Load and branch. Wait, where's the loop? Huh? Oh, branch equal to zero, 3b2, 3b2. Okay, so that makes sense. So yeah, so this loop is doing what it should. See, that, that to me, it see, feels like this should be really fast because load and branch, load sub branch, load and branch, load sub branch, yeah. It, also, by the way, that does mean that um, there isn't any, if, if the, the, the compilers pointed out basically that there really is no need to do this. Um, is there? No, I could, I could get rid of the first one and then it would be just as fast. Um, but it shouldn't be any worse. Mm. I'll just try it. Wait, uh, Christensen, I, I, I ne didn't write U32. It's an I32, right? Yeah, I32, not not U32. I don't think branching on sign bit is faster. Oh, wait. Oh, I think I get what you're saying. So you're saying do uint 30 That would be interesting. Although, okay, so there's some fun things we can do. Let, let's scoot to the next part of this. Also, I don't know why the focus. Hello. focus hmm I'm not sure why this isn't focusing am 
My webcam has decided to die. There we go. That was weird. Oh, we're back, and I'm not blurry anymore. Um, what was the thing that you had said? U U32. We could try that. So, what what is this, uh, Christian uh, Christian Iverson? Um, can you articulate a little bit more um, about what you're suggesting? Like, you're you're saying that somehow if I subtract and do a uint32, something is faster. I don't understand. At any rate, uh, the, the next step to all of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how much time passed between the last transition and this transition. Um, actually, said Kuba, can you, uh, I mean, articulate what the code would be for this then? I don't really understand. Like, what would the timeout code be? I'll paste it in chat and then you can... Tell me what that should be. Uh, at any rate, so what we're going to do is we're going to, inside of here, we're going to make a histogram of all of the different times. Um, and so first of all, what we actually want to do here is I'm going to set timeout to No, actually, I can just say now, even though that's a little bit weird. Actually, yeah, timeout is just, oh. Hmm. No, I really do want to say timeout is equal to now plus 1024. Timeout is equal to now plus 1024. OK. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to have I'm going to make a uint 8t, and we're going to do a map of bit times. And we're going to make this 1024 big. And I'm going to say bit times, bit time, plus, plus. And it's actually got to be a little bit bigger than 1024. I'm going to make it like 1056, I guess. No, maybe bigger, 1280. There we go. Uh, and then the idea is that I'm going to make a one mark any time that I get a USB message where that's a um, that's a that's a one. And uh, Dias, this Risk Five doesn't have a cache, but it does seem to have uh, something is sus with it. It does seem to take longer and shorter amounts of time depending on what's what's going on exactly. Um, Oh, I just realized something. We don't need to read sys time. Oh, oh my gosh, this is totally. Durr, our timeouts can just be a number of, of cycles. I don't I don't know why I didn't think of that. Uh, so timeout can just be like a thousand, I guess. I don't know. Let's pick a number. Let's we'll try this. Okay. Sorry, I know I'm jumping around all over the place. Uh, so what I'll say is for. Uh, Timeout equals a thousand, and this will be, uh, or while timeout, timeout minus minus, if that break, okay, that looks a lot cleaner actually. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do that. Okay. Oh, hello. Yes, this looks more like what I want to do. Oh yes, yes, quite so. Oh yes. Okay. Um, and while not timeout. Okay. Um, I don't know if a thousand is going to be a good number. That's probably too big. Um, let's come up with a random number. Let's say. 
180 and see if this is a good amount. And we don't use timeout anymore here. Oh, this is much cleaner. So if timeout, or for, while timeout is equal to bit timeout, timeout, while it's non-zero, timeout minus minus. The reason we write it this way is because if we write the, the if condition to be timeout, it turns into a single instruction which can be compressed, which is like, uh, is the current value in this register not zero? If so, do this, or the other way around. And, um, then we're gonna just do this thing right here, which is if, if in dirt, I think this will work. Um, let's give this a shot. And I'm also gonna protect this. So I say, if bit time is less than size of bit times, then we're gonna go mark that off. Okay, and then down here in the, the loop, what I'm gonna do is int i for i is zero, i is less than uh, size of bit times i plus plus. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say printf lu comma, and then I'm gonna say bit times i, and then and actually what I'm gonna do is disable first. And then I'm going to enable once I'm done because it's going to take a while to print this out and we don't really need to do it very often. Uh, we only need to get one of these. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to say printf new line. Um, and what this will do is it's going to tell us, it's going to create a histogram for how, where all of the bits appear. Um, oh, I don't, do I want to do this? Let's see what happens. Ooh, looks like we got some data. Oh boy, oh boy, oh no, 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 I don't wanna do this right now. Let's, let's, uh, I'm set bit times zero size of bit times. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna wait much longer. I'm gonna wait like two seconds between this. Okay, it looks like we have some data here. I'm going to take this, copy, uh, calc, where, where'd it go? What, where's, Huh? Okay, I have, oh, it's this tiny little thing. Okay, whatever. Uh, no, I wanna edit paste special. No, I don't wanna do that. How do I paste stuff in that would, can I do tabs? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, that kind of lined up right for us. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it looks like our inner loop is twelve cycles. Um, hey, that pasted. Uh, is there a way to? No, it did not paste. Uh, well, I mean, uh, Control Alt Shift V. I, I want a way to like 
reformat it to go downwards instead of sidewards. Control Alt Shift V. Control Alt Shift V. Yeah, no, it did paste it as data, but it goes this way. I don't want it to go this. Oh, it. Oh, maybe this is right. Okay. How do I do a histogram here? Can I do this? Is this right? Oh, excellent. Hmm. What we see is we see these two here represent what I believe is an immediate transition. These two, I believe, represent a lag transition. This one, I believe, represents... Hmm. Is there something happening on Discord that I need? Oh, I do need to check it. Okay, um, so the point is that what these do is, um, what this histogram is showing is, let's zoom out here some. What this is showing is that if, if we're in a short transition, then the bit times are either going to be this, this value or this value, one of these two. And If we are in a longer transition, so like this here, so the amount of time between this transition and this transition is two bits, so it's going to be here. Um, like it's going to be longer, so it's going to be one of these two transitions uh, because there's going to be a little bit of jitter and stuff like that. Um, but so that that seems a little surprising to me. So it'd be. This represents just a, a run of one. This represents a run of two. This represents a run of three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. No, that can't be right. There are no runs of eight. Hmm. Or are there? Oh, interesting. No, that can't be right. Let's... Hmm. Uh, time, no, no, no. This the CPU is one hundred percent in order. The CPU is not reordering any instructions. I do know that much. Um, the other thing is this is why we're using the system clock right now. The the processor is never going to use anything other than the exact number of cycles, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I still don't want to rely on that just because it will be difficult to to like check that moving forward. Um, I'm still frustrated that it takes 12 cycles. This loop takes 12 cycles. The reason I know that this loop takes 12 cycles is that every time I'm reading this, it's divisible by 12. If this loop could take less time, that would be super awesome. Um, let's just take another gander at that because it would be really nice to get a better histogram picture of what this is actually shaped like. Um, and maybe this would be a reason to use the timer capture. Wow, this is all kind of crazy, but what it looks like happens is 
A5 is 180. We read in the GPIO, we compare, or we end the GPIO with the thing that we're looking to change. Branch not equal to zero, 3BC. Skip down here. So that means if there, it, that means breakout. Otherwise, if we don't want to break out, it's going to go here, which is, oh, oh, uh, subtract one from I, and then if I is not zero, loop back up. So this is the inner loop. Why is this so slow? Is there any way to speed this up? There is no branch predictor on this chip. Um, you know, we access this specific register enough. We should be able to use a tight load word. All of these should be able to be compressed instructions. So this is this is two bytes per, per instruction, but we don't have to do that. There's gotta be a better way to do this. Let's see here. Um, in reg. Oh wait, no, other way around. Those errors don't matter. Uh, let's see here. What did this output? Ooh, spicy. Hello. Ooh, this looks neat. This looks like much more interesting data. OK, uh, let's look at the assembly again and see if it looks any tighter. Where? <sighs> okay, let's check here. So here, what we have is uh, okay, so we're loading timeout T2 with 180. Load word A5. No, dang it. Come on. I don't want you to do that. I want you to... <sighs> no, this is not necessary. We can do this better. So this is saying um, load A5 with A4, but a relative offset. But I, I don't want to do that. I want it to be clever -er. -er. Um... I thought I could outsmart it that way. Apparently I can't. Um, we can outsmart it this way. Inline UN32 read GPIOD. No, can we? Ah. OK, I'm going to just try writing the inner loop here. Yeah, let, I'll, I'll try writing this as Yeah, let's just try it. We'll try it. We might be able to, maybe we'll be clever, maybe we won't. We'll see what happens. Uh, inline, assem. Um, I mean, I know that I'm like like boondoggling this, but we really want to have like nice clean stuff to go with. Um, any rate, uh, L or LI, uh, let's look this up. Uh, risk, ISA, uh, compressed. Oh, that's old. I made that mistake once. I made a whole tweet about it, and then somebody was like, 
scolded me for uh, using an old um, old copy. Where is the PDF? No, I don't. What? V risk B compressed extension. Okay, whatever. Risk five ISA. Privileged. Mm, we're going to go down to the C extension, which is here. And now we're looking for what is what are some things we can use. Um, Is there a load immediate? Oh, C dot load immediate. Okay. Oof, 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 oof. I thought we could put a bunch of stuff in a C dot load immediate, but I guess we can't. Um, sure, whatever. I'll just call it load immediate. Um, load immediate. Uh, let's say um, timeout, comma 180. Uh, then let's see. Let's crib off their code because they know what they were doing here somewhat. Okay. Uh, load timeout 180. Um, and we're going to do uh, C dot. What is it? C dot load word. C dot. Not SP. C dot LW. And then, and actually, this is going to be the loop. So this will be one B C dot load word um, T one comma. Oh gosh, is that the syntax? Or the in reg uh, and I P one comma oh it's like C dot and I right like that's the instruction for compressed can C and I yes yes that is I um One arrow four C dot oh, let's look at what their code did. C dot branch equal to zero T one. I think it's just T one. Um comma two F C dot um, add I time out comma uh, minus one and C dot 
branch not equal to zero. Is that what it is? C. Jump and link, jump and link. Branch, see that branch not equal to zero, that one. And that will be to one B. Hmm. Okay, and then once we are done, I think that's everything actually. Um, Uh, so I can only do 48 megahertz right now. I can do 48 or 24. The chip will run at 48 or 24, but I have tried overclocking it and it does not overclock really well. So uh, one of the other annoying things is we're running from flash. So we have extra wait cycles in the flash. So we really want to keep that as tight as we possibly can. Um, uh, new line, the backslash n backslash, that's how you do new line. Oh, because uh, uh, I don't think you can use r is the, syn like I can't you think, I don't think c lets you use r syntax, r string syntax. Um, any rate, I think this will do us. Uh, so now we have to give it the, I always forget this, I always have to look it up. Um, it's output operands which is going to be do we care about timeout here what do we do oh yeah timeout mm. which is going to be syntax is Oh gosh, uh, so it's timeout, and then we want this to be a register, but it's gonna be read and write, so plus r timeout, colon, and then we have input, I think, is the next parameters. Uh, so it's output, input is gonna be um, uh, plus, no, no, it's just gonna be r, so it's gonna be uh, the value that we care about is GPIO in reg. R open parentheses timeout. Uh, or not timeout. GPIO in reg. I think this does us. So it, the one the condition that we're breaking on is branch equal to zero, and then the other one will be branch not equal to zero. Uh, yes. Oh, and there is no two f. Let's write that out. Did I inline? Oh, it's ASM volatile. We aren't modifying memory. I think this is going to be fine. Junk at end of unrecognized character one. Is that not how you write registers? I don't, I'm so bad at this. T0. Let's try this. Maybe I have to actually explicitly call this out. C dot load word T1. I think that's right. Illegal operands. See? Oh, I have to say the clobber. I forgot about that. We're going to also clobber. Um, T 
one. What is the error though? Junk at end of line, first unrecognized character is one. Is it like zero? I think that's how it wants it. Zero of this. Do we not have access to T zero in the? Hmm. Why is this wrong? We're getting a little bit closer. Um, one B. Oh, that's right. One B. One two F. Okay, so let's fix that. Two F. Okay. C dot load word T one zero T. Illegal operands. Why? Why is that wrong? C dot load word. Wait, 2F? Did I leave another 2F in there somewhere I shouldn't have? Oh, yeah. No, no, that's right. So the idea is what this does is it says 2 forward or 1 back. That way I can have two of the same labels inside the same function. So 1 back means go back to this one. 2 forward means go forward to this one. I think it's C dot. I'm pretty sure it's C dot. Um, here we go. I wanted to make sure. <coughs> oh, wouldn't you know that? There is no access to T with the C registers, so we'll have to call it something different. Let's do a S0. Okay. That would explain why T1 doesn't work. S0, S0, S0. <sighs> Am I? I mean, it compiled. Okay, let's get one or one more in. Okay, so unplug. Ah! Oh. Yeah, well, whatever. There we go. Oh, hold on. Ah, let's unplug. Well, it doesn't look like our code is any better. Um. Maybe it is, actually. It's hard to see. It's hard to tell. Let's 
I mean, it certainly looks a lot cleaner to me, but... So, yeah, we are now using all the compressed instructions. So, load A5 into S0 and S0 is 16. Branch not equal to the out. Okay. So, I think our assembly code is correct. Uh, is there? No, there can't be a T0 in there. Where's the T0? It wouldn't work with T0. So I did want to do this. C dot load upper immediate. Twelve. Can we do that? We can cheat. We'll cheat. Yes. Uh, C dot li load upper immediate, uh, and that would be one. C dot load one. So that's four oh nine six. Uh, four oh nine. 6 divided by 8? No, let's do 12. Let's do 16. Okay. Add I blah 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 minus 16. I think I'm going to be trying to be clever here. I, I don't I don't know if this is actually going to benefit us though. Like My goal here was to make it so the timeout would... Oh yeah, look at that. All of these are nice compressed instructions now. Okay, but let's see if this actually works. So I'm gonna go, wait for it to print. Hey, Dom Nom. I know it's not VR chat, but it is, uh, it's a live stream. Okay, let's paste this in and see what this this table looks like now. Is it Control Alt Shift V? There we go. I would argue this is even worse. I would argue this is much worse. It looks like some of these loops sometimes take different periods of sysclock time. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I do like me some assembly, and this is going to be a lot of assembly on this project. Try to count it. So we have one peak here, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 cycles. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Ooh. 11 cycles. So GCC was right. It's actually slower this way. Ugh. 
Well, uh, let's comment this out and let's go back to how it was. Let's see if we can figure out something else clever. I mean, we could always just put this in RAM if we have to. I don't want to though. Maybe we'll get started with it in RAM to get things nice and precise and then we'll bump it out of RAM later. Actually, that's probably what I want to do. I think I will do that. Um, okay. Yeah, let's let's do this for now with the timeout and all of that the old way. But let's um, say attribute section. Uh, R S R O data. Um, okay, let's see how this goes. Also, let's turn off line wrapping. Oh, well, that's that's actually much more interesting now. Uh-oh. This data is looking pretty sweet though, I gotta tell you. So, okay, we're just gonna do this for right now because uh, this data looks pretty good. Um, what we're gonna do is we wanna find out at any given time, uh, let's write that down, what time is it in? We are now 2.30 in and uh, and uh, we have bins. Okay, so what these bins are is these represent the, the amount of time between each transition. So this group right here represents the number of bits which are like, uh, like a single transition. And then the next group is like it waiting high and then going low. So like one bit, two bits, three bits, four bits, 1 bit, 2 bit, 3 bit, 4 bit, 5 bit, 6 bit. Now why is there 7? There should never be times where we're waiting 7 or 8. Ooh, that's weird. I don't know why we would ever, well, how about this? Let's take a look at what the Sele shows. Oh, I see. It's probably this junk out here where it's like long since passed, there's no packets, but it still didn't get the memo that it needs to stop. Oh wait, no, that's, that was me unplugging it. Here we go. No, they still exist. Okay, so yeah, something's wrong there. Um, no, we are missing a bunch. We are just missing a bunch of transitions now. We should see one of these for every transition. Uh, I should be stopping for EOP. Am I stopping for EOP? I'm not stopping for EOP. Regardless, we should be able to see those transitions really clearly. Um, and it looks like we can't. Because this function is, yeah, this function should go twiddle twiddle. Uh, hmm.
Oh yeah, something is hosed. Why are we still getting these in the middle of nowhere land? It means it's timing out. I think that's what that means, right? Like, what in the world? What, what is this trash over here? Oh, hold on. I gotta open the latch. A friend's coming. Oh, okay. Uh, so something is falling apart. Let me go save off this code and then I'll revert back to where I was before. Um, hello. I'm gonna just undo a lot of stuff here. Okay, let's at least make sure this, this works. No, something is really hosed. Why did I just reverted everything to get back to something that I knew worked? Hello. Mm, hello. Hi. This is wild. That we are live right now, by the way. Cool. How many people is it? It's oh gosh. Jeff, your your legs are shaking. <laughs> oh yeah, I just went up the ladder. What's your cat's name? Uh, my cat's name is Friday. Hi Friday. Hi, Friday. It looks like forty six people right now. So. Cool. Hi, um, I am f fighting a bug that I don't really understand. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna okay. unplug the USB and plug it back in. Hello. I'm gonna click stop. Is this the ladder the only way in, or? Uh, or is it just the comedy way? I mean, well, it's. I mean, otherwise, I have to like leave and go down and get you guys. Fair enough. Ooh, that's effort. Yeah. So, um, should I take off my shoes? Yeah. Or either way, it doesn't matter. You can stay a while. Uh, I also have like an extra chair here and also in the other room. But I think just one extra chair and the couch will probably be sufficient. Did you guys sense. bring laptops or anything? No. Uh, no, no. Oh. We, we just go get them if you want. We just came from, from, a, from a big walk. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much interest you'd have to like contribute to this. Uh, what is it exactly? Uh, I'm doing a live stream with uh, trying to add, write a software Bitbang USB uh, uh, stack for a uh, this microcontroller that I like, a little 10 cent microcontroller. Cool. We should get laptops. You want to go get laptops? Yeah. Okay. I have one extra microcontroller and one extra programmer, so uh, sure. only one person can really partake. Uh, That'd probably be more Josh's domain, but I can still get my laptop. Okay, up to you guys. I, yeah, I should have mentioned that. <laughs> And, and yeah, if you guys, any combination wants to stay, feel free, or however you guys want to do it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. um, so at any rate, I don't know why this is happening here. I don't it's know what villain. this is. Uh, it's like, like so I have an interrupt that's firing uh -huh. that's, um, that's, like, the, the thing is that it's, like, I twiddle this pin on the interrupt. Mm -hmm. Am I doing this anywhere else, actually? That's a question. I am doing it somewhere else. Let's get rid of this. Okay. Okay, this is the only place I'm doing it. Mm. Oh, I 
should unplug the USB. I'm going to click start. And then I'm going to plug in the USB. I'm going to wait a second and stop. Oh, no. Yeah, when it's unplugged, I just get this continuous stream of mm. who knows. Maybe that could, it could just be like noise on the line or something. Um, well, at any rate, there's this thing here. Let's see, is this reasonable? No, this is still really weird. It's. Oh yeah, you can open it up and check it out. Um, here, actually, I should probably like make a wider view. Uh, I have a different camera for wider view stuff. But, Ooh, nice. Oh, I guess I can't. This one is just too narrow to get all you guys right now. But yeah. Okay. That's all right. These are track. These are yep. track. Yeah. So if you guys want to see. It's much more compact. What are your guys' names? Hi, I'm Jeff. Casey. Josh. Josh. <laughs> Okay, um, Friday has beguiled them. Oh yeah, if you want, you can hop on the, the live chat and like also help moderate or whatever mm -hmm. as well, because there are, don't sit on Friday. <laughs> um, hello to the people who just showed up. Yeah, there's, uh, is the interrupt handler re-entrant? What is, uh, no, it's not. So it can't be re-entrant, because I'm only acknowledging it here. Um, Mm. Turn it on. Square wave through. Uh, it, the switch is on at the bottom of it. Ah. There. Oh, That's no. the uh, we have this thing called uh, swag for Magfest. Okay. Um. Uh, what does Duck say? Charles, I am begging you. What are you begging me? <laughs> Not time out for your loop decrement it to zero. What does that mean? Not time out for your loop. Not time out for your loop decremented to zero. What does that mean? What like you you say that that like like give me code. I only speak. But if I say not time out, then it's going to just immediately break. Yeah, that is right. At the bottom of the loop. At the bottom of the loop. At oh, it is the bottom of the oh, loop. Oh, while right. not timeout. Yeah, you have that. Should be while. Oh, 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 thank you. Okay, let's unplug this. Get going. Plug it in. Please be right this time. <laughs> Stop. Let's zoom in on one of these transactions. Oh, that looks better already. That looks gorgeous. Oh, okay. Well, thank you guys. That was that was helpful. Um, a tribute. Oh yeah, let's actually look at what some of these look like. What is that a uh, graphing axis you're using, by the way? Which one? Seen that one. The Graph. One you had up the graph. Oh, this yeah. is Sele. Uh, uh, so this is Logic by Sele. What they sell, they sell these like little logic analyzers, mm -hmm. uh, and it lets you look at stuff over time. It also lets you look at the analog signals over time. So like if you get like power droop or something like that, yeah. and you have like some issue, you can see like, oh, when I send this message, the power like dips, and you're like, ah, oh, that's what's wrong. Um, it looked like GPU visit first, so I was like. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I love the the side scrollers. I guess yeah. you could call them. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do this one more time. I'm gonna try to get the data that we were trying to get before. Um, plugged it in. Okay. Ooh, there are still some nasty bits all over the place, but let's see if we get some nice con. No, we don't. It's still mm -hmm. hosed. What is wrong? So this looks right to me, though, where it's like transition, 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 yeah, transition, funny. transition. Like the idea is I want to have not an interrupt, but I want to have an event every single transition. And I that think that sense. that's, I think that that's good here. This looks. This looks completely correct. By the way, Duck, thank you so much, because I would have sat here for like an hour trying to figure out that problem. Uh, uh, the best sale was the OG Logic 8. I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I'll, I'll use whatever I find that can tell me what digital signals are doing. Um, okay, well, let's figure out why that is hosed. So bits, bit times, bit plus plus. So that should all be right. We're going to go get laptops. Okay, we'll that be, works. We'll be right back. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll be doing this till like 10 p.m., maybe 11. Is it walking distance? 
so. What? To the to to Valve, uh, pretty much. Our hotel is by Valve. Yeah, yeah. You could just walk there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh no! Now the world knows at least where I live within a, a mile. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very dense place. You'll be all right. Uh. And um. Yeah, when you guys come back, I should I should get out the other webcam that Good does idea. a wider view. Um, okay, let's see here. Oh, attribute um, section SRO data. Okay, let's give this a shot. Uh oh. Oh, am I not resetting the the bit? I think I might not be resetting the bit times. Is that what's going on? Handle bit times, bit time. Bit time is now minus last. No, no, I am resetting it, so that's right. Um, why does this data look all jank? This data is not good data. Uh-oh. Hello? Hello? Is it is it not going to work? Huh. Anyway, okay. Yeah, so this is all wrong. This is all wrong. Um Why would this be right and this be wrong? Anybody else see what's going on here? Are you setting last time properly? Uh, no, that's the problem. Thank you. Okay, let's try this. Wow, uh, Duck, thank you so much. You are just absolutely winning today. Oh, this looks like some data. Ah, this looks more reasonable now, but this looks not as friendly. This looks scarier. This looks a lot scarier. Maybe this is right, though. Let's see what it is. So this one's centered around 30. So we'll divide 48, because we're 48 megahertz, divided by 30 samples is 1.6. So that, that does sound like about one time slice. This one right here is sampled around 64. So 64 divided by um, 48. Oh, no, I want to do it the other way. 48 divided by 64 uh, times 2, 1.6. So that's about right. So this one here is 92, so 48 divided by 92 uh, uh, times 3 is, that's about right. But what in the world is 106? 106, 
or sorry, 48 divided by 106. That's nasty. I don't know what that one is. It gets, things really seem to fall apart out here. Um, We should be seeing like little humps that are like very nicely, tightly packed uh, of this data, but we don't. You know, I'm just gonna, for funsies, go copy the assembly code back in and see what happens. Well, something broke. Oh, uh, L U I, L U I, load upper immediate. Mm, that's also wrong. Why is it doing this? Let's at least see if this part looks good. This part still looks good. Let's take a look at this. I mean, it looks different now, I guess. But we still have these like random spikes in the middle of nowhere land. What is this spike here? It's like 45 or something, 47? Like, yeah, that's like in the middle of a bit. That's just completely wrong. I didn't, I just overwrote the first several, uh, first several data points. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I have to do this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This is not working out the way I thought it would. This is just not working out the way I thought it would. I'm up to any suggestions right now. I don't, I was expecting to be done with this part by now. I was really expecting to be done with, with this part. Um, this is a little embarrassing. I don't really know what's going on. Like, is that reflected in this data? Also, why is this? Like, what's going on out here? Why is this just going off into La La Land and doing the dumb thing again? Could it be the timeout being not following through? Hmm. 
Okay. That's not the code I wrote. This is the code I wrote. Oh, 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 that's the code above. Am I resetting the timeout after each successful bit? Uh, let's check that. I would say yes. Load up or immediate timeout one. So I think so. Uh, let's go switch this back to load immediate and 180 because maybe I did something else dumb. just upload immediate because we don't have that many bits. Oh, I don't want to do that yet. Oh, data came in. Yeah, this looks so weird. And it's stuck in the stupid loop. What is going on? This is even worse. What is going on? We should see little gl glumps of data. Last time is now. Blah, blah, blah. Last time is now. We're clobbering S0. Timeout data TPIO and reg. Read and write timeout register. Yeah, I know. Mm. Oh, 180. Let's take a look at this data. Well, it's certainly denser. Let's take a look and see if it's that's good or bad. Oh, okay, we're a little better, I think. I'm not 100% sure about this. Let's take a look. So 48 divided by 32, perfect. 48 divided by 64. That loop in the interrupt still won't run more than, what, what do you mean the loop in the interrupt won't run more than once? Timeout. If timeout's not zero, it should be good. But what's wrong with this duck? What's wrong now? What did I mess up? Fourth bit is messed up? Fourth bit? No, fourth bit is the right bit. Let's take a look. Except that, yes, yeah, something is hosed that this thing gets in a mode where it just goes off into la la land. Click, 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 all the time there. 
Um, I'm not sure what's causing that. Wait a minute. That's what's wrong. Only, only branch of it. I, I need to code more live so I stop making these stupid mistakes. I need to get better at this. This is insane. I can't believe I messed that up. Okay. Let's take a look at this data. Maybe we'll have gotten it right this time. Well, that's just complete garbage. I mean, at least it isn't going off into La La Land, but let's take a gander here. I have no idea what that bit is doing out there in the middle of nowhere land, but let's see here. We're first logging, like loading in, who knows what's going on, but now we look for the transition. Transition, 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 transition. There aren't any transitions here. Where are these bits coming from? They're just made up. Okay, so what? Oh, 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 oh. It does have to be not equal to zero because it's we're looking for a, while it's a low bit that's or a high bit, that's fine, and then it branches out on low, and then this one's the other way. Okay, never mind. That was right. That was right. Okay, okay, okay. No, so the code was right. Yeah, it's stuck in La La Land again. What is going on? Why is this code so janky? Transition, 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 transition. Thanks, Ben. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that helps. I don't know, man. I, I I know, I know. I shouldn't have introduced. This is a little unnatural. Um, I mean, like, so my issue right now is that I have this, this interrupt that's running. And, I mean, well, A, it's giving me weird data sometimes. But, um, actually, let's paste this in. This looks different. Yeah, so this this isn't right. It should be, so what I should see is, um, what I'm doing is I'm counting the amount of time between each one of the transitions. So like when it goes low to high from there to this one which is light, high to low and I stop. And I wanna see the amount of time that, that is elapsed between each of those. And I want that to be really small. Um, and I, well, not really small. I want the deltas to be really small. So the idea is it should be very regular. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll go back to uh, the non-assembly uh, code. And we'll see how that goes. Whatever. We're running from RAM now. This really should be fast enough. This really should be fine. So this, what the heck? Zero is a frequent one.
Well, now it's just trolling me. There's no way that... There is no way that bit time could be zero here. Now minus last time. Bit time is now minus last time. Last time is set back here. What is going on? Bit time plus plus. Maybe I'll just put this also in the SRO data section just in case. I appreciate that, TCL. Uh, I guess I am better than like watching airplane on airplane or something. Okay. Is this any better? No. How is the zeroth value not zero? This is garbage. What is going on? Handle bit time. What is going on? Okay, so here, I'll, I'll rubber duck you guys. Well, I mean, let's just answer that one first. I call this function handle bit time. And if bit time is less than size of bit times, then I say bit times of bit time plus plus. So I want to make a histogram here. And I pass in bit time, which is now minus last time. And I update last time to be now. And somehow here or here, let's just assume it's here. Is last time? Maybe I should put, uh, Let's try this. Okay. Let's try it. Maybe maybe that's it. Maybe that really is it. This looks like garbage. Why is 253 there? Why is 253 in the zeroth element? This makes no sense. I'm sorry, guys, that you have to uh, suffer through this. So the instruction rate right now, because I'm running from RAM, should be pretty quick. Like about one cycle per, per instruction-ish. Uh, actually, it's maybe more like a half half between a half and a whole instruction per cycle. I don't think it died. Is the stream up for you guys? Okay, what if we just don't put this in RAM and let's just try again and see if we're insane. I mean, it looks different now, I guess. Uh, 
Maybe I'll have to abandon this approach. This is totally meaningless. This is not right. There's got to be some bug in my code here. It would be really nice if you could script this and have the terminal overwrite the delays over and over so that you could jiggle the wires and see if something weird analog is happening while watching. Hmm. I can actually, I'm on the other Sele, so I can actually watch that right now. Or not. Did I get any? I did. I just barely got some. Oh, but it's, the chip is frozen because some reason. Missed it. Got it. I would say that looks beautiful. Like that is exactly what USB should look like. Well, anyway here, um, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. So I don't think that that's the issue. I think the issue is somewhere in my code, but I don't know what it is. So we're using the C code now. I set timeout to be that. While timeout, timeout minus minus. break but somehow bit times are getting wrecked because I have a zero in the zeroth bit time mm. Ooh, I know what I could do I could say bit times plus 16 And then, if it's a memory corruption bug, I can at least identify that.
Really? Mm, that's sus. 253 in this? Wee woo indeed. Are those bits you meant to test two different bits? Uh, which bits? Sync. Oh, um, yeah, I probably should be testing. No, no, sync. I should be testing sync. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> yeah, sync and sync. Mm. And just to be consistent about how I'm writing this, I'm going to. Hmm. I feel like things have only gotten worse. Is now set. Let's take a look. I think it is. Now equals sysTick now. Is something less than last time overflow? I mean, yeah, I have a debugger, but like, maybe I should actually use the debugger on this. Seems reasonable, actually. Uh, hmm. We can try that. Oh my gosh, I see what you're saying now. That's what it was. How? Okay, well, that's a lot better. Well, I mean, it's not a lot better. Why is there 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? What? So I just realized I need to fix this. Let's also keep it plus 16. Well, that's weird. Oh, it's because yeah, I am going off the end of that array. That's fine. Uh, sure, I'll, oh, maybe that is an issue actually. Let's try all of the things. And sure, we'll include string.h at some point. Oh my gosh, real data this time. Okay, oh my gosh, finally. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so what we wanna do now is, oh, and it, yeah, this looks like much more real data. Um, Okay, let's try this, not adding 16 because we're no longer being janky anymore. Okay, so what we're gonna do is run this and then compare the data to when we do it with the assembly. So 
this is the C code. And I'm going to assume all of the assembly is perfect and has no bugs. Uh, pro tip looks like it has some bugs, but let's let's see what this looks like. What was the keyword with this? There's some way to Is it columns or rows? Data series, I think it's in rows. Yeah. Ooh, hello friends. He will be able to reason about this data. I like data. Uh, let's chop off everything after, I don't know, halfway through. Okay, so what do we like better? The top one is C, so row one is C. The bottom one is assembly. Which one looks like it has data more neatly packed? By the way, Duck, thank you so much. I do not know how I would code this without you. <laughs> Also, there is this problem. What is up with these two bits right here? That's in no man's land. So that's like 107 cycles in. Hello. Five by 48. Hello. Uh, no, it's 48 divided by 107 times five. That was a much easier sum the second time. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's three. Monday, whatever you think. Uh, Thank God it's Friday. 48 divided by 107. So that's it in megahertz. Oh, yeah. Take a C. Oh, pardon me, Cap. It's OK. okay. We want nice, like, clear, concise bumps. Um, let me get a wider view camera. Cool. And I will get another, the other dev board. Nice. Your cat is interested in my froggy bag. <laughs> yeah. Froggy bag. That's the kind of ascent that needs air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Sorry, I don't. I can't run the AC while stream. That's alright. It's all good. I understand the perils. Ooh. Here oh. is the dongle. Then the thing. Oh, uh, oh and nice. Over there somewhere are the uh, Dupont cables. You'll have this to is, use. This is a very similar one to what I had. Mine doesn't have a blocker. Uh, they are all very similar and subtly different in really mm -hmm. frustrating ways. I've been told okay. to look in the camera. Oh, I just oh. killed it. Sorry. <laughs> killed it right Friday. Like, Sorry. No, that one's not. Oh, that one is mine, yes. There we go. Oh, hello. He squeaked back at me. Ah, oh, there I am. Yes. Gremlin style. There's Friday. Yeah. A little squeaker. I thought this was wider angle, but I guess it isn't. <laughs> How old is Friday? Uh, three? Oh. Oh, big. 
old enough to be an angsty teenager in, uh, That's it. in cat years. <laughs> They say plus the uh, pizza fund. Pizza fund? Um, I can't eat pizza, but I would be up for if it's twenty bucks. Uh, and you guys, do you want pizza? I don't really eat pizza. I, I like. He, pizza. he doesn't, but me and me and Jeff go. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm only like two people here pizza. would be able to uh, to, well, that, to do hey, that. That's twenty dollars a pizza. That's two two. Do you like biscuit? Oh, no. okay, this Stop being a little twerp. This, this is the Aww. biggest twerp. Ever. <laughs> you are a little no, twerp. It, it's dry. I don't need that right now. <laughs> mm. Oh, look Aww. at him. Oh, I'll take this here. Aww. Friday. Friday. <laughs> so you won't come get us from the door, but you will get distracted by the cat. No, I understand where your priorities lie. Don't you worry. Well, I mean, the cat yields viewers, yes, so. Exactly. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> child <laughs> um, okay so here's the thing what we're looking for is we're looking for these these humps to be nice and tightly packed together cat is greater than people <laughs> um, yeah you, uh, at least one of you guys if you hopped on then you could do um, the live chat and if one of you guys wanted I can make you a uh, moderator on the the chat there um, I have no brain left <laughs> for okay. moderating I apologize that's okay um, at any rate, we are, cat is not equal to code. Uh, okay, fine, yeah. Um, okay, and also cat does not help when he's biting my hand. <laughs> um, uh, anyway. These plug sockets don't work? Uh, those should work. Uh, I don't, I'm going to flip it around. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's some plugs in America. Oh, that means no, just special. these. Just these. These are special plugs. Uh, oh, 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 you mean because it physically wouldn't go in? It's, it's yeah. one side is bigger oh, than the, the yes, one prong is bigger. Yes, oh, yeah, 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 yes, that's true. Yes, that's, yeah. Because we, we, do, we do separate neutral and hot. Anyway, back to the stream. We want these bins to be clearly defined as to, like, where our bits are coming in. And... Our goals are that these should be evenly spaced. Um, let's see what it should be, because it should be uh, 1.5 megabits apart, so 48 divided by 1.5 every 32 units. So there should be one at 32, there should be one at 64, and there should be one at 96, and there should be one at 128. But we have this weird one in the middle of 109. Um, 109 does not evenly go into 32. So something is still wrong with um, someone mod moderate Josh. <laughs> well, uh, wait, oh, wait, are you actually? You're still logging in. Okay. Um, oh, I'll push the thing back on you guys too because it's. Valkyrie in the chat. Yeah, it's that Valkyrie. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, bastard. Well, 109 doesn't even remotely go into 32 any kind of evenly. Um, I'm not sure what could cause this. Okay, so we could do something totally different. Right now, we're doing it based off of the system timer. But what, what I could do is I could graph it based off of the number of times it had to spin in the timeout. Um, Let's just give that a shot and see what happens. Friday. <laughs> um, yeah, let's just give that a shot and see what happens. So instead of the assembly code, actually, did we ever decide which one looked better anyway? I think they both look about as bad. Like, 
Assembly gets a couple in really quick. Yeah, they, they all, all these humps look okay, but not great. Yeah, like what is, I don't even know what's going on there. Um, anyway. Um, let's go back to the C code. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not do timeouts. Well, I guess we could do timeouts. Let's try this. So now we're no longer operating in, are you kidding me? What does this even mean? Okay, well let's just craft it and see what happens. By the way, the super chat was I love scotch. Thank you for the uh, the pizza fund. We will figure out what we're going to do food wise. So, Josh needs internet. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> how to do this in a way that you don't expose your Wi-Fi password on the stream? <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, can I just do this? There it goes. Cool. We're, we're good now. Josh has internet. Um, I correctly. I. <laughs> Whoa. What in the world does this Indeed. mean? Think that we can trust this even less. This is painful. It's about a 10 second delay. <laughs> mm. Oh, I have two messages I just noticed. TCL just sent me a picture of where he's watching the live stream from. Uh, actually, I don't know why. If you were going to take a picture of you watching the live stream from there, include the live stream in the picture. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, what I wanted to see was I wanted to see like how many times is going through the loop before it's it's giving up and it's like it's like oh the event happened and I can exit now. Um, and it looks like sometimes it's basically zero. Or no, sometimes it literally is. It gets through the loop zero times before before the bit has already transitioned. Maybe that's it. Maybe we're running out of time. Okay, so let's let's try this. Let's undo what we just did. Okay. We're doing that, but now instead of also twiddling this bit, we're going to just comment that out and see what happens. It's Friday. I have a preferred toy. Um. They usually do. That he really likes that. Which which one? 
Friday really likes uh, the jingly one. Yeah, the jingly flowery thing. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's worm on a string. It, it, yeah, sure is, it, it literally is. It's, you can get the eyes. Here, I'm gonna go make that that window bigger. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> he immediately walks away. Let's paste this in and see what happens. Don't overload. <laughs> We're setting up a dangerous game of, uh, of like, uh... Go get that, go get that worm. Nope. Oh, it's still cute. hosed. It is You've figured out spatial <laughs> geometry. Still hosed. I'll take a look at this uh, USB thing. Yeah, you do all the hard work. <laughs> There's a bin here, a bin here, a bin Yay. here, and a bin here. And this doesn't leave enough room for us to really do very much either. This isn't a Zerti keyboard. It's putting layout, but physically oh. it's Zerti because it was cheaper. What is Zerti? A Zerti. A Z E R T Y instead of I think it's Belgian layout actually. Like this is there. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. it's cheaper. <laughs> he probably made like five and that was too many. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm kidding. No, I rarely see this, but I guess I'm not Belgian. Um, I don't really know what's going on right now. I don't know why this is like not nicely going into bins. Um, let's see. Should we, okay, so should we just abandon trying to find out the delta times between these? Or, wait, what if we just unroll it? Stop shaking. Stop shaking. There you go. <laughs> let's just unroll it and see what happens. So let's move it back out of RAM because this won't fit easily. This is just so that we can get going. I Maybe the export exactly the data from the logic analyzer 60 and plot that as a histogram. Oh, how would you do that? How would you plot the delta time between these two things? I'm Sam, I am definitely up for doing that if you could do the processing for me. Um, if like, let me, let me just save this out. Desktop uh, capture of USB. This keyboard is so strange. Wait, which CSV? The shift key is as wide as it is, as the thin keys. It's MATLAB time. Well, that's scary. <laughs> uh, well, can I just give you the Salay capture and then you extract the stuff? I'm gonna drop this in, I guess, CH32V003 fun, or is there a better place to... Oh my gosh, there's so many people in the voice chat on my Discord right now. I bet you they're heckling. <laughs> they're heckling the cat? No, me. <laughs> <laughs> Speakers? Yep, those are speakers. Oh. What? Are they just drivers with like a little mesh over them or? Uh, no, it's got a driver on the back and it's just foam. Huh? Well, I, dude, I can't just export it. It's got analog channels and stuff. Can you just take it and go? Or do you really need, like, do I really need to export it? Yeah, you can't see Friday. He's on the other end of the tube. He is currently tubing. Oh, you can see him. Yeah, you can see his button. Right, but only if I move out of the way. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm in the way. Actually, I can just move this over here. You should, like, wirelessly pair a GoPro with your screen and then attach it to Friday. 
Mm, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Although now I'm like in the way for you guys. Oh, uh, oh whatever. I am building. Yeah, actually, I'm, no, I'm installing. Um, uh, yeah, the the speakers are basically those speakers. Um, they're pink foam speakers that are just they, they have the driver mounted. They actually do sound really nice. They just don't have any bass. Yeah. Well, you know that's that's what a subwoofer is for. Oh, I see. Okay. Interesting. I like that they're suspended too. That's crazy. No, 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 no. You shouldn't need to build GCC. It, uh, the Risk Five version is on the AUR, so. You, I mean, you should be able to use almost any Risk Five okay. compiler because CH thirty two V 3 Fun includes a copy of Live GCC uh, for this okay. chip. Cool. Uh, and actually, it was funny. I had one, and then somebody made a better one, <laughs> right. and so I was like, "Okay, I'll just use yours." Um, anyway, uh, back to this. Why would this not be right? So, Sammy, you're gonna go check the. Um, uh, God, you're gonna go check and see if there's something wrong or right with the bits. It does say in the readme that I'm harsh. It's gonna compile for a long time. Um, is there a way around that, or what are you, what are you trying to do, Cat? Uh, just trying to get it building. I'll figure it out. Josh, hold it up. That is an amazing fish. I can't. We okay. found the fish. Found the fish. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful angle I have with it. I don't know. Friday had never really liked that fish. It said he goes right back in the tube. Well, you know, I like I like the fish. <laughs> okay. That's what's important. <laughs> it amuses me. Mm, okay. So still looking at the bit times. So what other things could I do here with this? Can I, are there any tricks we could, what is the assemble? Let's go back to the assembly one. Are we already in the assembly one? Um, the biggest problem with like VR when I do like full, full body stuff is that it just flaps around so much. These are nice because they're much lighter weight. Yeah, five trackers are. It'd be nice if it was curved on but you know I could create a mounting plate. Actually. Well, they have, um, this is how they normally are. Oh. Here's like the foot tracker. Oh. oh. And here's a not foot tracker. That's a waist tracker. Oh. Um, no. Actually, okay, if you want, so you can. special backstory. Right. That's nice. Uh, wait, I don't have a third one. I don't know where it went. Uh, if I can have one of those backs, I can show the stream. So the idea is that they go, uh, for just for anybody curious, we were looking at the trackers, the Vive trackers. They're on these like bands so that when you mount them to your body, they don't really like go bloop, 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 bloop that much. Yeah, this is a this is a third party one, right? By, uh, Josh is yep. Tundra. Yep, though. third party. Oh, what's that? Well, I mean, it's as much third as it is any, you know, anything else is third party, right, yeah. so. Um, okay. <sighs> Casey, at some point you did mention your mocap setup. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just full body VR, and then um, a, f a friend uh, and a friend put together a a way to record that, um, and then yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's that. I think some VR headsets have like face tracking. Some VR niche ones. Yeah, they uh, they'll have like um, cameras inside, and they do do all sorts of functions. Well, eye tracking. still have those cursed entries. <laughs> the friend was uh, was Dan Smith at Voxelized on Twitter. He got a... He, I, I didn't know if I wanted to put... He wanted me to put him on blast or not. <laughs> He's in the chat. He's in the chat. Hmm. This might actually be doable. This set of them lines up relatively well. 
Do you have a plug for you over here? Um, two. So this is one, two, three, four. I think this might work actually. That's not that's not mean. He's just making noises. Uh, let's make sure we're not like doing something weird here. With your, with your stick. Alice count. Yeah, this this might work. Oh, we could just keep going with this and hope that somehow someday we figure this out better. But I think this is tolerable now. Uh, and what I'm going to do actually is as soon as our bit transition is complete, ooh, I know what I'll do. I'll turn it on. So as soon as the bit transition is complete, I'll set GPIOC high. And then, oh, why didn't I think to debug this before this way? Chris, did you see the, um, the 100x uh, Fox News thing? Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to guard these inside of this, like set it high, set it lowness. Um, so set it high, set it low above. Okay, <laughs> what's going to happen here is I'm going to be able Jeff. to monitor. Okay. Uh, something's wrong. Illegal operands. What? Legal operands, where? Oh, you. It's me. My fan's turned off for some reason in Linux, so now my laptop is very hot. Oh no. What is the... I mean, yeah, my processor right now is at 85. 94! That's a little toasty. Ugh. I wish I knew why my fans turned off. Okay. I don't think that's a dog thing. Mm -hmm. Generally. Somehow this now ended up in a register we can't use. Ooh. Wait, I can't remember which side is it. Is it this? I think it's that side. Can I do this? Is that going to work? I think I did it on the wrong side. GCC does not want to play nice right now. It never does. Well, it could be MSVC. Yeah. I was about to say. I'm going to make you moderator, by the way. Cool. Why can't I move this window? Well, let's go back to the C code, because then we can at least get moving again. Okay, so now what I've done is I've made it so that we're going to set the GPIO... What? As long as you want today, just don't do it during the week. Cool. Okay. Play. Friday really did come over to me to stop the king's butt. 
You came over to Friday, let's be clear. You <laughs> skipped data. this space. <laughs> no, let's turn off the analog. Well, my computer is dying from the heat. Sorry, mine's my exhaust. No, is yours. Mine, right at yours. mine is. Oh no! Oh, come on, please. You've added three sweaty boys and their laptops to, to your to your. I don't think Josh is index. producing that much heat. Well, okay. You see him on? Okay, no, actually, that's really warm. Is, uh, is this X eighty six? Oh, okay. That's why it's so hot, because it's x86. Okay. Let's go load this back over here, shrink it back, because we are no longer on cat time. Um, okay. So what we see here is a transition here. And if I remember right, let's see, how does this work? Yeah, so in a transition... We set the bit, we do work, and we oh, make it low again. Oh, no. So transition, we set the bit, we make it low again. Transition, <sighs> whoa, that is a long time between. Uh, that is not fun. That is not fun at all. This is going to be painful transition so that one's reasonable but that was 520 nanoseconds it's a very long time Seventy-two. That's normal. Why would sometimes it take so long to transition? Oh, it's fine. <laughs> I can be a I can be a lap for the laptop. That's got nineteen percent charging, right? Okay. Two sixty-five. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I want to go fine. dig down through this and figure out why sometimes it takes a really long time for these four hundred and fifty-one nanoseconds. How many clocks is that? That's Divided by four five one. Oh no, one over that. That's not that bad. That is like ten cycles. That's that's how many cycles it is. Um I don't like that though. Oh what is this one? Five hundred and twenty six Nanoseconds, oh my gosh. Um, woof. 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 We might have to do something with DMA to get this to work. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Adventure. Journey. Uh, it's trying to get to the warmth. <laughs> I'm sorry guys that we haven't even gotten to the first part of the USB stack on this. I might not make this publicly available just because this is so embarrassing right now. <laughs> Although, at least on the plus side, here's Friday again. Yeah, it is Friday <laughs> once again. <laughs> hmm. Somehow bin utils is taking longer than GCC. Isn't that a bin package or not? There's I'm at least not in Chaotic R. No, no, I mean like there's AUR and then there's like... It's in neither, I saw no bin package. Maybe with a name that's not yeah, it has typical. Yeah, has bin at the end. No, I saw none. Mm. I did not refresh though, so... You never know. Um... Okay, does anybody have any ideas for place somehow I could write some code? Why don't you use the other laptop? Mm. Yeah. Well, I guess what if we just don't use the timeout? Sure. 
Well, and we have to have the timeout. We have to know if we timeout. Because otherwise we can't print F later. What happens if we just don't? What if you do some yak shaving and break it down into its core components, optimize them, and then build it up from those pieces? I feel like it's so simple though that like it should just work. So now I'm not using a timeout anymore, I'm just spin looping on that one thing. So that probably is going to be like three assembly instructions. Well, it's not three assembly instructions, that's for sure. But this, see this doesn't make any sense to me. This is one, this is two, this is three. We got something going on at 102, four, maybe? I mean, what in the world? We need more data. What do you want, Sam? What do you want? Tell me what you want. What you really do really you want, want this now that I've added the BH, BHR, whatever? Uh, I I can I can go cap send another cap into channel. Actually, this is probably the best cap for that. Um, actually, no. I should probably do one more with this updated thing, and then I'll put that in channel on my Discord. It's logic two. Uh, it BMX the 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 version is log logic two. Do you guys have a functioning build chain yet? I am still building the bin utils. Why you should? Arch doesn't ship pre-built. I swear there was a. There isn't a pre-built RV thirty two at all. Tab. Don't, have don't interrupt the build, you'll have to start over. Uh, here, let me just get you a different time. Dude, you, you, you can't just press like Windows key M. 
Um, so let's just take a look at this now. Wow, this looks even jankier. That's because you're just typing yay with no command. So it's trying to do it. Oh wait, this is actually a lot better. Except here. What is going on here? Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is really interesting here. What happened here is it's low, high, low, high, yeah. after the bit should have changed. Okay, okay, so this is... Oh, um, Sam E., I'm posting this in CH32V003 fun. Um, oh, I just realized that's the wrong microphone. Mic check. Oh, that's a lot better. Okay. RV32GCC should be in most distro repos under RISC-V32ELF-GCC. RV32, yeah. Um, anyway, um... So, no, I mean, I, I think I just found what might be, like, the biggest problem here, which is, um, like, in this situation, there was a transition. It took us a while for the transition to, like, be registered. And then, so, like, 304 nanoseconds. Then it took us 416 nanoseconds to service it, which is depressingly long. Um... And then, uh, then we were late for the next transition. We just missed it. So, like, line goes up. We're still servicing the old one. We get ready for the new one. And finally, we can go again. And so, like, in that situation, like, we're going to be late. The, the, the delay is just so long that it's, like, it's, it's going to give us errors. I'm really surprised this processor isn't, like, I played with it a fair bit. It, it normally feels faster than this, but. <laughs> Jeff, look. We just discovered an Animorphs generator. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, here's another example of it being late. So, Took what 325 to trigger 416 to do the thing and by then we've we've missed our window not really missed it but we're late and so like we're gonna get bad data like it 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 thinks it went high here when it really went high here hmm hmm Was impressive. What in the world is going on here? You only have 32 clocks per bit. Just reading SysTick may take a few. I know, but it should be fine. Like, also, what in the world is going on right here? Does maybe sometimes reading SysTick just takes a really long time? Um, I mean, I could always just try umbri the unbrick command. Actually, that's what I'll do. Eventually, if I click this to record enough, it'll, uh, 
eventually if I click this, eventually it will actually record. Eventually if I click this enough, it will actually record. <laughs> eventually if I click this enough, it will actually record. Yay. Oh no, I clicked it when I had the good data. Oh no, no. it recorded and I, ah. Oh. Overrode it. Yeah. That always happens to me when I want to turn off my computer, like, because it's hung. As soon as it's like, unhung itself, it, oh. Probably because the power button makes it interrupt. <sighs> nope, definitely missed it that time. Nope, didn't work. The binaries are downloading slower than the code was compiling. <laughs> That's what the user should be doing. To me, it's fine. The Microsoft server. We have the same Wi Fi? Yes, the Microsoft server. Are you sure? My laptop is dying. Okay. The Microsoft server is more powerful than the Razor Blade. I doubt it. Oh, is that a Razor Blade? It is. Hmm. I have a 2016. Whatever. I got it this anymore. time. This is not good now, although it is good. What is it? 17. Mm. I had a 15, but then the main board got fried because I was using Steam Deck chargers uh, on it. And so yeah, they sent they me a 2 inch larger one. The Steam Deck charger did nothing wrong, the main board was just too weak. Not handle the power. It should not have requested that much of a CD. It should have been able to handle 100 watts just fine. Okay, I'm going to save this off one more time. This is still using, still reading from the times. Maybe the right answer is we just give up and actually use a timer capture register because that will just tell us the amount of time between each thing. And we can get that and pipe that into DMA, I think. This makes sense. I mean, what is the timer capture register actually doing on this board? Uh, well, I mean, it would be like if somebody else wanted to write code. So like the idea is I want to make it so that this thing can be a bootloader. Right. And then people can write code to do whatever they want. But if we had to use the timer capture register, it would be like, well, you can only use timer two in this really specific case. Mm. Otherwise, you're not allowed to use it because because USB is using it. Right. And I was hoping to avoid that, but. I mean, if you know the, if you know the clock speed of it, you could use that for timing. So I, I want to do that, but the problem is if the user code is running DMA. Right. Oh. Then each instruction takes a random amount of time. Actually, you know what? I can re export this as an SVG now that I only have this. How do you do that? File, export data, is that it? Export raw CSV. Oh yeah, I'll just do that. Sam E and uh, BMX, I will, uh, I will go output this as raw data. What? Uh, A7, the old one. Oh, nice. I still have a crop sensor, like 6500. I've been meaning to upgrade. I really like full frame. I don't care that the A7 is like 10 years old. It yeah. still is nice. Honestly, yeah. It's not the full frame that I need. I mostly just need less noise. Um, so much keep the time and keep time and if it's up or down and process later keep and time and if it's up or down and process later I don't understand what you mean Gabriel uh, at any rate what I think I'm going to do though is I'm going to make some other notes here uh, probably not fast enough uh, so I'll go back over the the itinerary that I had written um, so we have a couple different options we could do uh, GPIO with pure DMA, but the actually I'll shoot this back at me. Um, yeah, we're just waiting for it to download. No action. 
wait, how long? Wait, I have pretty fast internet. It shouldn't take that long. I don't know why it's what it's doing. But Jeff says a lot slower than mine. I'm really dumb. Yeah. Uh, any rate, we can do pure GPIO DMA, which is where we use a timer capture and we say at exactly 1.5 megabits a second, just keep capturing those bits. Click, 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 click. And we can trigger that off of the the DMA, and that's gonna or like sorry off the 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 edge, and that probably is good enough. Um, and then it just dumps the data in RAM at 1.5 megabits. But it does mean that if there's clock drift, uh, it'll it'll be out of sync, or if we are a little late, it'll be out of sync. Like we can't oh, I'm sorry. we can't synchronize oh, to the preamble. The other option we have is to use timer capture, which is where it's doing the stop clock thing for us that we're trying to do in software. But we have to have a way of extracting that, which I think we can do with DMA, but I don't really know how. And it does mean that user code that'll run on the user side will be unable to, um, uh, the user code will be unable to use that timer or that DMA channel. And I was really hoping to like let an Arduino environment for this be able to use the full chip. Um, at this point though, I mean, it probably is just the right thing to do. Okay, sure, let's go for it. Uh, actually, I don't know, let's, uh, let's take a vote. Do we wanna use timer capture or do we wanna use DMA? The, the two approaches are DMA gives us timestamps of what the two bits are at exactly 1.5 megabit intervals Actually, honestly, that's probably the easiest way anyway. I'm just gonna do that. We'll just do, we'll just do that. Forget, forget this, I'm, I'm, I'm giving up. Uh, I'm gonna save this, uh, actually I'm gonna save this as an old approach. And now it's going faster. Uh, copy rv30usb.c, rv.c dot um, last attempt before DMA. Okay, we're gonna move on to DMA. We're gonna forget this. We're gonna just jettison this part into the sun. Um, uh, uh, pound, uh, actually we're gonna, we still wanna use the, the pin chain channeler because that's how we're gonna start the timer. Um, timer, if it keeps having bugs, it's been a while debugging. Go the second way. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, wait, wait. Are you voting for? Yeah, I'm doing a G. I, I'm proposing we just switch to GPIO interrupt to start a timer, which starts DMA, and then we get in blocks loaded directly into memory of what the value is on the USB lines at each time slice. Uh, an external clock? No, I will not be using an external crystal. By the way, there is one nice thing. We do have HSI trim. So if we can count the time between the one millisecond EOPs from the host, we can actually tune our own internal clock to within, I um, can't remember what it was, but it was really, really tight. I do remember looking into that. And, it, and it's, you can get it very, very close, like 0.01% uh, off. Uh, okay, sure, let's go to the DMA version. I'm just gonna delete all of this code and I will just rewrite whatever needs to get rewritten. I am so sick of this right now. Okay, so we're deleting this. I mean, heck, I'll still have a high system clock time. Why not? Whatever. Don't care. Um, we're still going to use GPIO in. All of this looks correct. We'll print something out down here. I don't know what it is. Print F high for right now. Okay, now let's go look at the DMA example. Uh, so right now there's only one example, which is for DMA output, um, but we want to use direct uh, DMA GPIO. We want to use it for input, so it shouldn't be that hard to retrofit this for our needs. Um, for 
for right now, let's not use DMA interrupts. Uh, we could actually, that would be a lot of fun too. If this did work, we could just queue up like six times or five time slices and then process through all of them. Uh, one of the rules with USB is if you send, if you get something from the host, you have to reply within 6.5 time slices. So yeah, we'd have to play that one, but um, that would be fun too, because then you could do other things while DMA is running. Like your code could still be running while the, D while, while the USB packet is happening. Let's not worry about that for right now though. This, yeah, we're just gonna go with this. We'll just, just go with this roll. Okay, so this is the DMA. This is the timer. Let's copy and paste that into our code. Uh, okay, so for the DMA, um, we want to have a memory buffer. Let's make the memory buffer, I don't know, int 8t. Uh, what's the longest packet that we can expect? 128 bits, I think. Let's assume 128 bits. Um, oh, that's another annoying thing. If we have to use the DMA, then that means that the user application doesn't have access to all the RAM because we have to have space for the DMA buffer. Anyway, whatever, let's just roll with it. Um, uh, DMA buffer, and we're gonna say, we're gonna make this 128 bits wide, uh, or bytes wide. Um, DMA for shifting the uh, GPIO into. Um, okay, so cool, got that, DMA buffer. Okay, so we're gonna put that as the memory address. Um, let's see, which way is this? Is it, uh, we gotta look up DMA in the TRM. Oh no. The struggle. Oh, the misery. Oh, the misery. Wait, where's the... Is there like a collapse all for this? Here it is, the DMA controller. I'm not using that, we're not using that. CFGR, so we're gonna do not mem to mem. PL, we're gonna make it, I don't know, very high priority, I guess, or high priority. Whatever, some standard thing. I don't know, whatever it was I had there. M size is gonna be 8-bit. P size is gonna be 8-bit. So it'll be uh, eight bytes loaded into RAM at once. Mm, thanks, D863. Have a, uh, gotta, if you gotta go, gotta go. Um, we're not gonna do circular. So we're gonna just do one shot. Zero, not circular. Uh, we do want to increase memory. Uh, uh, we don't want to trigger off of interrupts. No, no. Um, the direction we want to go is read from peripheral. Zero. Um, so high priority, we're going to increase memory every time. Okay, so all this looks good. DMA buffer, we want to read in GPIO D. And what we're going to do is we're going to read GPIO. What was that register again? Be Friday careful, hissed. he will manipulate you. Well, Friday hissed at me earlier, so friendship restored now. For now. Oh. Wow, City of Mesa, that's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
black mesa? Yeah. Okay, so we're still gonna trigger off of the timer. Okay, so now auto reload period. How long, how many cycles is the interrupt gonna take? What is it? Let's see here. Thankfully, it's 48 make Friday. No. No. This cat is a punk. He looks innocent, but he's a punk. <laughs> Thirty-two gigabytes of EA cash. Of EA? Oh. EA. Mm. Pac-Man, pretty much. So forty-eight by one point five is thirty-two. So this will be thirty-one here. And we want to trigger in. Where do we want to trigger? Well, we can adjust where the standoff and trigger will be. Um, uh, he's actually like stuck behind me right now. I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> anyway, um, let's just set it to the beginning of the bit. I don't, I don't know what the right answer is here, but I'm just gonna go with that for right now. We can figure out when where the optimal place to sample is. If I get to the point where it says could not initialize any supported programmers, does that mean I have to connect to it? Yes. Great. Woo. Uh, it's over here. Uh -huh. uh, compile Blink and see if it goes. Okay. Oh, you'll have to hook up Power Ground and uh, I see. Uh, uh, PGM. These, uh, yes, using the, 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 the these things, the rainbow okay. cables over there. Nothing beats getting power chomped in the feet in the during the morning hours. Yeah. These guys? Uh, yes, you need three of those. Okay. Power, ground, and whatever the other one is. Sure. Okay, so timer one is going to be set up to just go. And I should... Is there a way to stop it? Like leave it in reset and then... Because I want to go on a timer interrupt. Or on the interrupt. It's a very precarious Ooh. imbalance. Just yeah. staying perfectly still. What are those? I just realized. Is that the British thing? Is there a way yeah. to maybe cause a DMA to trigger off of a GPIO change? That would be pretty fancy. Let's see. Which um, pins? Uh huh. Uh, it's the bottom few, uh, ones. those ones. Yeah, they're labeled PGM, which is hooks up to SWIO on the uh, programmer. Okay. Actually, I didn't even think about that. Let's just try that. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little bit of a detour. So I'm gonna use DMA, but what I'm gonna try to do is read from the timer. Yeah, or SysTick. I'll use the DMA to read SysTick. Let's see. Is that possible? That would be a lot more clean because then it wouldn't have any interrupt jitter. Um, where are the events? USR Tim to card request. I don't see any way to trigger DMA off of a GPIO. That's really annoying. That would be really cool if you could trigger DMA off a of GPIO. Hey Charles, should it go to VCC or five volt summit? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. The chips are five volt tolerant, so. I usually hook like five volts to five volts and then use the regulator on the board. Okay. Uh, can somebody go through the data sheet and see if there's any way that they can figure out how to read uh, uh, how to trigger a DMA transfer on a GPIO change? Are you asking these two? or? I mean, no, I'm talking to the chat in general. <laughs> I don't know how many people are watching right now. Okay, we've got Forty. power, ground, what's the third pin? 40 people. Somebody out there can try to figure this out. Get to work. 
I'm about ready to give up on this and move on. It should be, and if it isn't, something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> one is moon round, and one is earth round. Ah. Uh -huh. um, do I want to do... Is it the 3.3 .3 volts, or yeah. is it PGM? PGM hooks to uh, SWIO. Oh, okay. Good boy, Friday. You're a good boy. Um, legit though, somebody did put 20 bucks in, so if you guys did want to get food, I, I can, if you guys organize it, I will give you a 20. Alright. Um, so should I go in with the USB-A? Yes, this? yes, okay. correct. What do you like to eat, Chow? Uh, right now I'm pretty much rice. I, I have pretty restricted diet. Not just rice, but like, I just can't have any sugars, so. Mm. I don't see on this chart any kind of GPIO. That's annoying. Let's go back to what we were doing. Okay. Actually, is there a way to trigger a timer to start off of? Mm. I may have forgotten the USB. Well, it did compiled, so. It did compile. Yeah, no, I guess not. What's your password so I can put your input? I'm going to say it out loud on the stream. I, I can mute it. Wrong. Okay. Okay. My pet ferret can type better than you? Not true. Try oh, not. yeah, no. It, there's a setting on sudo that makes it insult you when you get the password wrong. <laughs> There's no plug there. Hmm. Oh. Oh no, oh, yeah. no other way around. Plug there. Oh, you're right. Plug there. Plug there. As somebody pointed out recently, uh, a lot of times for some reason, uh, I just want to get something working, guys, and then other smart people can try to figure out how to make it better. Um, I don't know. Well, uh, I just want to... I'm going to just try this, where I do the 1.5 megabit thing. Oh, yeah, dial out. I should already be in dial out. It's not... You have to just see what slash dev slash hit raw, what, what group that's under. And if it's not under any group, you may need a udev rule. Which is silly. Oh, yeah, my udev rules are a bit messed up. Of this I should be fine. Had to go through all of this when I did the mm. base station stuff on Linux. Power management. Try it. Oh. Okay, let's have a look at LSVC. Good idea. What's that? Is it? Are you sure I just ran it in sudo? Yeah, pseudo hit. Wudo. Oh, well. There it goes. Splashing. Nice. Okay, well, we've got it building. Can you, uh, do Oh, which guy did you use? Was there, did the you? The readme. I just did the readme version. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know if, uh, David Wilmore, if you're still on, they followed the readme. Did you, which, I'm curious if you followed his instructions or my instructions. Um. I don't know which ones it was. I followed the section building and flashing on the readme and the one before it for system prep. What about uh, GCC? Like the last part of it. Uh, GCC? Yeah, like who, wh which guy did you use to build the GCC stuff? Oh, I just I just installed the package. Yeah, we well. found a pre -built. Oh, you had a pre-built, okay. Yeah. And then it was going slow for some reason, but then we restarted it and now that's fine. Uh, thanks, Coder. Okay, 
Okay, so I care about T1, CH1. Where is that going? So I can just I'm monitor it. it is really flat. Where, where in the world is T1, CH1? Is there a way CH1? to wipe it so it doesn't blink? Uh, dash, if you run mini CH link, dash U, I think it'll, uh, it, that should erase it, I think. Are you saying you don't like it blinking? Oh, I don't mind it. I just want to see if I can affect it in real life. PD2, that's a wonderful port to do something with. Let's monitor it. So what I did is I'm plugging into the timer so I can see when the triggers happen. Um, and then that way I can see uh, oh, that works. like like click, 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 click when the DMA is actually happening. My laptop is super dying. Oh my gosh. Still at 94.85. What, what is... What's the command to find my CPU clock rate right now? Might be an LS CPU. Maybe. Nope. Dang. Uh, I also could have Mango app. <laughs> oh, the CPU. Yeah. Proc CPU info? Yeah. CPU tracking. No CPU info. No CPU info doesn't. Con oh. No, that's not the current. Mm -hmm. 314 megahertz. <laughs> oh, no. I'm so sorry, CPU. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, we might have to end this early if my CPU fans don't turn on. Oh. I really want the fans to turn on. Oh my gosh, that's horrific. Like, I, you guys can't see it very clearly, but like, it's like I type things into the computer oh, and it's like it delays right. before doing, yeah, 360, 370 megahertz. This is, this is not fun. Let's press onward though. Oh my gosh. should I build next? What? Like, I've done blink example. I don't know. What I guess I'll just do? I'll shop around. How do I turn the fans on, David? I can't figure out how to turn them on. They just, just, like, I did an update and now they don't, they just turn themselves on. <sighs> so, someone I work with actually made a fan B, which, uh, Okay, what do I type? Oh, um, now let me see if it actually supports whatever. I'm going to open another terminal over here. <gasps> well, if you have any recommendations, I will, I will try out any apps. I, I do remember sensors D finds no... Yeah. Oh, uh, it doesn't find it then. Yeah, that's not going to help. Yeah, well, I mean... I Surely there's something that can find it. I just don't know what that something is. I will prop up the corner. That's a good idea. Oh my gosh, so much heat is now pouring out. Oh. You've just been hotboxing the PC. Oh my gosh, it's already up to 596. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Is that in Fahrenheit? No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's megahertz. Oh, megahertz. 800 megahertz. Oh, thank goodness. Who is it that recommended propping up the corner? That totally, wow. Oh, we're up at a gigahertz now. <laughs> oh. My mom used to put her MacBook on chopsticks. Wow, it's so like responsive. <sighs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Back to, back to normal stuff. Okay, we have our timer set up. We're going to turn it on. So what I have to do is I have to find a way to turn off the timer except when I want it and then trigger it starting at zero. So, um... What I want to do is find. Do you want to connect to it? The DOM. Oh, I don't have DOM. I have DOM. Oh, I have done that. Oh. I've just been playing the game of uh, get my weird esoteric ARM laptop to work. 
guess I'm doing that. Is there like an easy way to reset it? Let's see. 1.8 gigahertz. Oh. Wow. I have no idea why the fan stopped working, but at least this is now tolerable. Uh, how do I turn the timer on and off? Surely there is a way to disable the timer. Oh, 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 der, C-E-N. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Equals zero. So inside this interrupt, what I want to do is do that, and then... Uh, Actually, what I want to do is Tim one or Tim okay and then we want to sleep let's just sleep for a whole millisecond um, and then let's just see what happens oh memory buffer DMA buffer a buffer okay let's try this wonderful wait what Oh, here we go. Okay, well that looks interesting. What way was it? We turn on the GPIO and then we capture and we turn it off, okay. Uh, so what we actually wanna do now is capture a fourth channel here. Look at this, the Sele is actually running. That's still always zero. Oh, because I didn't configure PD2 as output. Uh, GPOD. Uh, uh, let's do this as output. For timer. T1, C1. That's what I said, and then David Wilmore, the one of the guys in the chat, kept running into the same issues. With yeah, that. it says in the readme that they were very bad. So, because I have the game UEC USB devices owned by root has group set to root. That would be what it is. Oh, is it not that serial? I thought it was serial. Oh, like like old serial, not new serial. New serial. Hmm. It's not index like the the Bluetooth radio and that the the base station power management is like corrupt. It's like dev ACM zero file serial. I hate that so much, and there's still so many people that like it. I really don't <laughs> like it because they're just randomly assigned, and nobody knows which one is which. So I really like hid because you can at least tell which one is yeah. which. Um, I'm not sure why PD2 isn't triggering here. TD3 is PC, yeah, PC, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
on weight off. So maybe we shouldn't do a millisecond. Let's just try US 10. It's a Christmas miracle. My computer runs again. I cannot believe how effective propping up a corner was. Mm. Oh yeah. Maybe we should prop up the other corner, get like two underneath and... Then you'll have full airflow. Yeah. Like, was it Josh's or Jeff's idea to her chopsticks? That was yeah. my mother's idea. <laughs> Here, I'll split the stickies in half. Okay, so I'm not sure why this is not triggering. So if I turn on Tim1 CEN, CTLR1, oh, I think I have to do the auto function. Uh, so it's like not this, but something slightly like this. Hmm, it's that. Okay, let's try this. Oh, I don't, I think the angle was helping, like it was getting oh, like a graft, see? yeah. Mm, okay, I'll leave it back where it was. I mean, I don't know, but it was, it was whatever it was, it was working. <laughs> okay. Could have turned the steam deck on next to it and let that fan blow on it. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> that will be an exhaust rather than a... Uh, so this still didn't yeah. trigger. It is yellow. It's hooked up to PD2. Okay. Um, four times two out AFPP. Uh... Why is this not working? Uh, what do I do here? This demo I know works. PD2, I'll just copy and paste this line just to make sure I'm not crazy. What a perfect loaf. That cat is pretty wanking awesome. Friday. Perfectly square. him anyway um i can't quite get out of the way of the uh... he's in just the wrong position <laughs> oh load check uh which terminal is that in this one yeah, two gigahertz. Yeah, we're fine now. Everything's fine. Uh -huh. Is there so a way? I suppose you can even stream at three gigahertz. Not uh, stream at three hundred megahertz. I'm surprised too, but I guess it was like Link's like you will encode these packets, <laughs> and the processor was like, okay. Yes, sir. Um, okay, so for some reason, uh, how about this? Let's load on this device the DMA demo and see if the DMA demo works. Ah, so the DMA demo definitely works. So this is the channel four right here firing happily. Okay, so that that definitely worked. Um, so why doesn't my thing work? I copy and pasted that. This is all part of there. What am I doing wrong? Oh, through the tube. Send. Wait 10 milliseconds, or 10 microseconds. Oh, that is funny. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, the, I guess that is possible that the webcam would also be running at a lower FPS. Um, there you go. High frame rate cat cam. Mm. I really wish I knew why the fans... Anyway, whatever. Um, Tim's... Oh, dir, you have to do this to turn on the timer. Oh, and I have to turn on the power to the DMA too. Duh. Ugh. OK, 
Okay, yeah, let's do that. Did I not, did I seriously not turn on either of those? Reset the timer. Oh no, I do have it. Okay, so no, there's that. But I think you also have to turn on the power to them. Yes. I need these two lines. DMA and timers. Oh, uh, dot, 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 firmware make. Okay. Oh, uh, actually, I want to say firmware make clean all terminal. What do you guys want to bet this works? 10%? $3, which way? I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, Did it work? Machine froze. Okay, it didn't work for even more of a ridiculous reason this time. So now the timer, now the pin change interrupt isn't firing. Why is the pin change interrupt not firing now? Hmm. Something just broke uh, something. Let's see what happened here. We have things that are going on. We have an interesting bunch of interrupts here. Oh, look at that. We have something happening. This looks like it's working. So this is a bad example because there's an EOP at the beginning of the stream of the USB, but here's a good one. Let's see, where is it sampling? In the middle, 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 in the middle. Okay, so now we're actually sampling DMA in the middle of what we want to sample. Okay. Um. Let's look at the EOP and see if we can get the EOP in time. No, we can't do that in time. So the first thing we'll need to do is see if it's an EOP, which we can do by saying like, if, um, what is this? I know that we decided these were backwards, but D minus is actually PD3. So if plus is low,
There's also another trick that we can do, um, which is using the HPE fast interrupts, which maybe that makes sense to do. This is actually coming along rather nice right now. Um, okay, I think we're like back on track, basically. I mean, not on track, but uh, yeah, somewhere. yeah, we're getting somewhere now. Adjacent to the tracks. Uh, yeah. We are no longer like on a highway near the tracks. Yes, it is not a train going down the highway. <laughs> um, so if and what which pin was it that we would read to get this? If ender and um, This is zero, then we have an EOP. So we're just going to acknowledge the interrupt and return. To do, we'll worry about that later. But we can totally use those to like make it so our timing doesn't go out of sync. Uh, okay, so let's unplug. Oops, replug. Okay. So that's wonderful. So the EOPs are not triggering the interrupt, just like they shouldn't. This EOP doesn't trigger the interrupt, just like it shouldn't. Uh, we're sampling it sometime. I don't know why that looks like that it should be it should look different let's see if this is sampling the same place relative so the falling edge is towards the end of this now let's see what about this one the falling edge is kind of in the middle here the falling edge is towards the beginning wow that is a nightmare um We will really need to find a way to trigger that off of hardware. That's really lame. Also, sad part, I guess it's not bit banged anymore, but let's just keep going. Okay, so once we're in here, the timer is moving. The chat hasn't said anything in a while. Is everything still okay? Like, or at least I haven't seen the it. Last thing was uh, haha classic thirty-two. Oh wow, yeah. So it's chat is just dead. Okay. Um. Anyway, we enable the timer here. Actually, you know what we could do? We could start actually doing this the right way. I could say we're going to start by enabling the timer. Um, and actually, in reality, we probably should do this with, well, let's just try this. Start by enabling the timer. Um, and then I'm going to set this to FF before we do anything. on the floor. I don't get it. Oh, me. Over here. Oh. I used to have a cat called Jazz. Quite a few years ago. Oh. Mm -hmm. He looks pretty much like Can you not use my legs as a, uh, as a as like a future cat, cat scratching bait. post? 
I'll be my buffer of zero. No, he doesn't like the fish. He, like he hissed at me last time I gave him the fish. You shouldn't you give him the fish. I know you can debug with VS Code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Platform IO. I'm well, I mean, without VS, VS Code. code. You, no, if you I'm, go... I'm doing it on VS Code. No, I mean, sorry, without Platform IO. You should be able to go into the debug printf folder, and there's a VS Code project in there, and Ooh, it should okay. use all the core stuff without any Platform IO. Oh, okay. But you can also use Platform IO if you want. I'm, like, I've I would never, that, so. like, ding anybody for that, so. Sure. I'll have a look at the uh, debug printf. That's confusing. Why is that? He meowed at me. Yeah, you gotta meow at least. I gotta meow. I feel very privileged. He's a chatty boy. What I'm trying to do right now is, well, I'm not really sure what's going on there actually. Oh, do I need to reset the DMA? I think I need to reset the DMA. Uh, I think I'll be uploading the VOD. It depends. I, like, I, I, I'm going to... I think so. And uh, it's not really a VOD at that. It's more that the... Um, the <laughs> oh, no. mm -hmm. It's more that like YouTube just archives the stuff, and then I can choose to keep it public or not. And I think I'll, I'll keep it public. He's loafing right now. So am I. <laughs> um... I'm trying to remember how you force the DMA to go again. Oh, look at those little kisses. I mean, we could try some things. What happens if we just set it to enabled again? Oh, hello. Uh oh. No bites. Hey, show you want. Hungry. He was sitting next to, I think, his little ball. So. Oh, uh, it should be about now. Yeah. Do you have like an automatic? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was sitting over there. So. Um. Let's see here. Counter M A. So clearly just enabling it again didn't do it. What if I, uh... Interesting. <laughs> do I have to set the address and length again? Never seen that. It's like a sign of good memory. Oh yeah, my memory is shoddy. Shoddy, 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 shodd
Well, that's also totally interesting. It, well, that's weird. The line goes high like a lot after the timer started. But anyway, um, let's see here. So here's my confusion is what I'm doing is I'm saying while the DMA buffer has FF set in it. Oh, I know what I could do. Let's not do any of this. Oh. I have a lot of terminals open down here. Aren't I in the room? Are you asking chat? What is the question? Oh, yeah, okay. I am in the room. Yeah. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what was the question? Oh, have you considered setting up like a VS Code server thing so people can see the code as you type it? Like can you do that read only? How do you do that? Um, I mean, I can totally, it's really easy to run this in VS Code, I think. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, it's very easy. I don't think it's just that, but like. Well, I mean, I, that was with a lot of like a read -only, like, blood and grit VS that I made it work server. that way, but. For sure. Ooh. Like a read only VS Code server, and then people can see everything in that directory and look at the code. Uh, uh, the uh, yeah, we can do that. Why not? Uh, Can I share? Get or CP uh, firmware. Oh, uh, CP dot dot ch three dv fun examples debug printf demo dot vs code dot vs code grep. Um, when does the speaker activate? Uh, give me a second. Yeah. RV USB. Uh, sure, let's close all of this. I trust the authors. Oh, I need to install make file thing. Hmm? What is this called? No. Uh, so it just runs the command. Well, like, but uh, oh, this is actually uh, RV03. Uh, USB.elf. Um, run and debug. No, it says you don't have JSON with comments. Should we find? <laughs> try no. Try Control Shift D if you're using the folder out of debug printf. Mm -mm. Um, Didn't work. Mm. Wait, create tasks.json. What? Do not. Yeah. It, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the wrong folder. There we go. That looks a lot more reasonable. Okay. Uh, no, I don't want to load that. Uh, RV3003, oh, us.elf. Oh, I need to fix that. Uh, RV, there it is. Uh, USB.elf. Okay, um, control shift B. 
Okay, it's trying. Uh, yeah, okay, so I have to go. Well, first of all, oh no, I have to open a bunch of stuff now. Uh, so I have to open this. How do I. I want to go there. Oh, do I have to have C, C++? Yeah. Or, or Clang. I use Clang D for it, but. They're both fine. I think Clang D ends up being better than the Microsoft one or Clang. Um, yeah, unless you're using I C++ 20 features that it doesn't support. No, it does. You just have to go into it and do no. it. No. C++ 20. Tasks. Yeah, but not all of them. <laughs> Where? It doesn't like um, ranges, which is fine because ranges suck anyway. I think I'm enjoying this fish toy more than Friday. 100%. It's <laughs> is there a trash can around here? A trash yeah. can? Yeah. You mean a rubbish bin? A waste uh, paper box? Make clothes. What does that mean? Hmm? There's like a weird error. Wow. What's it say? Uh, it keeps hiding it. I don't want to hide my terminal. Uh, probably can do Control Shift P and then just type terminal. And that will uh, come up. Control Tilde. Oh. That's a fun one. Well, how do I? But I want to run the command in here. Do I do it that way? Oh, you mean you want it as like? No, a... I want it to stay open. Um, go to. Oh, you have close true. Probably want that false. Uh, well, that's a longer story. Actually, you guys might be able to help me with this. Mm -hmm. um, if you can work, like, like if you if you don't mind contributing to this afterwards, that would be sure. really helpful. Um, I'll show you Hello. the debug process. Okay. Well, first of all, what I want to do is I want to go to this file because I need to. Right. You probably need CCP. I think it. Tool. No, I think it it's that like the it include files nice. are different. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Or because it, it's yeah. in a different folder, but I don't know where this include. Is it here? Uh, if you click on Linux. No, it's here. It's here. Or yeah, or there. That would get you the same place. There we go. Okay. Wait. No, that's totally the right answer. What? Oh, you missed a comma. What? Um. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, real quick. Is this one of those that's allowed to? Please. Thank goodness. Um, trailing commas everywhere. Yeah. We it's need trailing some, commas in every yeah, yeah. comments. So it, I am I am truly okay. embarrassed that Steam VR does not oh. allow trailing commas. Um, okay, uh, we're gonna do the delay function from down here. So delay. Uh, oh, it's delay us. Okay, so let's at least get this all back together. What I, oh, D-A-E-L-Y. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Oh, and then the other thing is I wanted to be able to print F the value at the beginning of this buffer to see what it is. Um, and so I'm going to actually, yeah, not while. Uh, print F high 08x, comma, this comma 0. Okay, so if I do Control-Shift-B, image written, so now it's running a debugger, which mm -hmm. is fine, and it's also printf to yeah. the terminal, which is fine. But if I go to, where was that, tasks? Or was, which one was the one where you said, uh, here, this, right? Yeah. So what I want is, if I say, like, run in debug. That's going to be launch.json that configures that. OK, yeah. but watch. Oh, wait, no, that did work. Um, no, if I do it again. Ah. Uh. It asks. Yeah. But then it doesn't even close. Like, it's. Things get all hosey. I think it's because you said create another. I think it's trying to run it again at the same time. Yes. But hold on. Let's, let's kill everything. Please die. Please die. Consider death. Uh, cancel. Cancel. Go, go, go. Cancel. No. Uh, no. No. Uh, uh, I would just kill all of this I point. Lo I love software. Yeah, it's hosed. Yeah, I, I do a lot of wine debugging in VS Code, and it's uh, similarly tedious because it doesn't know what to do with the wine symbols. So I'm going to go back and turn that on, and that, that seems to fix most things, mm. which, which doesn't mm. make a lot of sense to me. But like, if I do F5, it's running, and the debugger connects, and 
Just know if you run another one. Like just just don't run it again. Just make sure to press the, yeah. the stop button before you run it again. Okay. Otherwise it'll fuck up. Alright, so this is now printing high FF, which is wrong. So this this is we we need to fix that anyway. But actually sure, heck, why not? Can we put in an interrupt here and see what happens? Because I'm just kinda curious morbidly, even though that's not gonna really tell us very much. Does that work? Can I put in attempting to bind the breakpoint? Hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's try a more it might say more in tame one. Console. See that that's one that I would expect. Yeah, that one should work. Yeah, I think you just can't bind interrupts that are inside. Uh, uh, you you can't bind them inside interrupts for some reason. Although that could you call to another function in your interrupt function maybe? Maybe. Wait, that did that or work? Or even long jump into main somewhere if it's really. Oh hard. no, I don't need to do that. Yeah, we're, we're fine. That would be. Uh... These? Last resort. Wait, oh, maybe it's not actually. Maybe these are just. Hold on, let me. Uh... Okay, this is actually a lot more engaging and fun right now. Yeah, okay, it does work. It does work. Okay. Nice. Um, all right, so what I'll show you, though, is if I don't click stop, but like say I want to build again. Right, yeah. Well, that didn't even work that time, but. Huh. On Windows, it does actually do the right thing. What does it say in debug console? Here? Yeah. Because it'll give... Oh. Some yeah, it it's just thing weird. It's just the output from the previous one. Okay. That's weird. Oh, but no, no. So that worked. But why did it work only when I went... To... I don't know. This whole thing is like on the cusp of the working. I think the terminal was catching that when you had the terminal section open. That was like eating that input. Okay, but like what I want to do is if I press F5, I want it to like see if I do Control Shift B, I think. Yes, so that did the right thing where mm. it closes the old terminal and it builds the new yeah. one and it yeah. runs this in there. So now I have this, and if I modify the code, so like if I'm over here and I, I change something, so instead of it saying hi, uh, I can say test, Control Shift B. Um, then it recompiles, puts it in, and and runs the GDB server and prints test. It works test. without the debugger, right. But it, 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 in Windows, this works with the debugger. But this also has the annoying thing of it's, it only works for some reason if close is true here. Huh. Uh, and if close is true and you have a compile error, then it just closes it on you. Oh, yeah. So, like... <sighs> you couldn't get the, like, problem matches stuff to hook, hook up potentially. Uh, if you know how to do I that... On the, okay. On the, not on the top of my head. Well, I mean, like, I'm saying, like, if you're willing to spend a little bit, I would be really appreciative. I will give I you so many that. dev boards. I'll give you a, a Nixie tube board if you want, or a Nixie <laughs> tube if you want. So, uh, uh, <laughs> like, I have been, the co VS Code has been inscrutable for me to, like, try to get yeah. working right. At any rate, so now we're whatever here. So is there a way? How do I share this with people? So there's, like, an extension called Live Share. Where is it? Uh, it's in the, yeah, yeah, extensions. Just search Live Share. Assuming you have the uh, Microsoft yeah, extension. Yeah, there yeah. it is. That just hosts like a mirror of this, like online, and, and you can make it read only. Okay. Uh, so if I have Live Share installed. Yep. Now I'm and here. Also, keep, keep place with your, with your cursor and everything, too. Yeah, what, so now what do I do? To, go to uh, dot .c. Uh, just do Control Shift P. Oh boy. Live share. Uh, da, 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 da. Start collaborations. Start read only collaboration session. That's it. Uh, then you sign in with GitHub. I'm uh, weird whatever. that GitHub and Mic It's kind of a yeah. small mercy that GitHub and Microsoft accounts are still separate. Okay. Well, it's going to do this over here. Wait, is that. Full access to all repository oh, wow. data and uh, actually I can't do that for mm. work. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thanks. You could try Microsoft account, I guess. Uh, that's, that's cursed. Yeah, we'll do a Microsoft account because <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. Uh, what is this now? Uh, live share. I can't believe they want all the things. It's probably Microsoft just, to Microsoft, so they just picked like the most. Yeah. Just gonna briefly like open source every project that I have on my hard drive. Nobody... Wait. No, I wanna. Oh, I have to cancel. Okay, 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 okay. I didn't realize Control Shift P did that. Okay. Uh... Yeah, Control Shift P is how I do like everything. Yep. What? No, I oh. want to do. Would you like to try a different way? Yes. 
Oh, oh, that's nice. Oh, that's doing GitHub again. No, I don't oh. want to do GitHub. Cancel. Oh, uh, yeah, cancel all the way. Hello? I guess. Try no, no this time. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ah, okay, Microsoft. I don't know if I have a Microsoft account. I can just. This time around, if like, you've ever used Microsoft Windows outside of this organization, Wait. you might have had How to have this... made one. Microsoft. Yes. Oh, you know what? Honestly, I don't have anything on my my work Microsoft account for this. I don't see any. Well, let me. Do I even have a personal one? It might take a work one. If it's like the Google. No. Well, let's see if I have. I mean, I don't even know if I have a, a Microsoft account for myself. So. I think he wants to get fed. I don't think he wants to play. He's hungry. He's He's hungry. hungry. Well, you can have the fish. <laughs> okay, not edible. It, it is edible. Look, it's fishy. Look, I promise him. <laughs> I promise he can eat it. He's smart. He's trying to get away from you. Oh, you know what? If you guys want to, I just realized we. Sh I need to start feeding him moist food. Uh, oh. Uh, like I have one more box thing left. Is it moist as opposed to wet, or? It's, it's wet. Right. right. Does you guys wait. mind uh, putting it like in a in a ziploc bag when I'm done, and then putting it back in the fridge? Sure. Where is the ziploc? Uh, drawer under this one. Gotcha. Yeah, I can do that. I'll go look at VS Code and see what I can do about that. Uh, Funny business. All right, here we go. Friday. For some reason, this is actually suspending right now. It used to just die when it's suspended. Okay, I think I might not actually have a Microsoft account somehow. Well, you don't need. I don't think you need another email to make one. So. Let me try. Hey! Huh? I did have, I had a different email that I had one with. Um, uh, sorry, it says make, read, write? Uh, you want it to be read only. But I if assume. I say, if I say read only, it, says, it just makes a copy of it. Uh, that's weird. Let me have a look at that. Where do you want the bag to go? Uh, in the fridge. Oh wait, invite link copy to the clipboard. Is there any issue you think with just publishing this if and it's read only, you're probably fine. I Even think if it it's is. Read write, you can probably still <laughs> Okay guys, see if you can see what I'm seeing. I'll have a go at that. It'd be really cool if people could like if I could at least see their cursors. Mm. It says that somebody joined. I wonder if I can see their cursors. Oh, look at Friday. Uh, requested to join That's me, I assume. Leo DJ? That's not me. <laughs> uh, always accept as anonymous, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to continue as anonymous. Okay, but I, I guess I can't see anybody's... Oh, you guys can chat. Okay. Oh, I see the oh interesting. Oh, yeah, I see the terminal out, but that's going to be cool. It's quite nice. Oh, okay. Well, this is makes it way better. Okay, we'll just do this. Um. Anyway. Okay, so DMA is always 0xFF. I'm not really sure why that is. Let's just not reset it in the interrupt and see what happens. Okay, not resetting DMA buff in the interrupt. Let's run this. Oh, yep, there it goes. That's nifty. Um... I'm guessing it also probably beats YouTube. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, so look at that. B6, A4, A4. Okay, it's definitely doing its thing now. No cat cam on VS Code, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't mind. This mm. is a lot of fun. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Friday is still eating. Mm. He's eating. 
Um, following guest user, what does that mean? Oh, so if you're following somebody, that means they like take over your cursor? Well, I don't want that. <laughs> Wait, what is going on? I don't know. Is somebody like trying to override? Is there a way to disable following? Oh no. I can't okay. seem to get rid of it. Whoa, what is going on? It is like I am following them. Why am I following oh, I think them? I you're looking at where they're looking. Yeah. Did you <sighs> click on some, there's probably some like invisible. Pin uh, at the top one. right. Oh, that's weird. There's only like a few places extensions can add buttons. Oh, I see. Yeah, the pin. Wait, focus your attention. Uh, Wait, so can they summon me? <laughs> That's that a little sucks. bit silly. That sucks. There must be a way to turn that off. Yeah, this is really annoying. I'll figure it out. No, stop. Um. Oh, wait, there's a gear here. Manage extension. It'll probably be in there somewhere. Oh my gosh! The summoning takes you out of the... <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Oh. What in the... This is clearly designed in a Microsoft office and never tested on, like... Just <sighs> random people. Focus participants. Oh gosh. Oh my god. Well, this is worthless. <laughs> I it was out. nice to try. It would be cool if it worked. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like it's close to working, but. Wait, can I edit the code here and save it there, maybe? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do it in VS Code. It yeah, VS oh, code. it automatically yeah, updated. VS code is smart. Wait, how, how quickly it does it... Oh, it immediately... Oh, yeah, you know what? I'll just do that. I'm going to leave VS Code running in the background yeah, yeah, and just ignore would, yeah. the heck out of it. People can move the cursor wherever they want, no matter. That is annoying, though. I really... like. Yeah, imagine if it was like off. they would like highlight yeah. or something, but yeah. not summon... Yeah. Move your whole focus. That seems... It's weird that they, it, I would assume in read only you would be the only one to do that. I don't know why they allow others to do that for you. Also, there's a dev board on the floor here. I don't know. I don't know. Are you happy now? Wow, this is completely obnoxious and <laughs> useless. I didn't realize people can like select the whole document and then <laughs> uh, take your attention on the whole doc. Yeah, nice. Okay, whatever. You want to look at this. Wait, how did they open up another thing? Well, that's scary. Can they open up other files? Probably only in the workspace. Yeah, only in the workspace, but yes. Oh my gosh. This is this is the most useless feature. <laughs> it would be cool if, if it, it didn't steal your focus. Yeah, again, I, I feel like them being able to just like go crazy. On your it's screen. not a problem within Microsoft because if you mess with the manager's focus, they'll yell at you. So yeah. no one considered. You're able to see this, what the settings are on this? Uh, like, probably on not. VS code. This is, I think, just a local copy of the VS Code settings. Mm. Like, it's the browser VS Code. Um, 
Well, I think something just... Nope. It, it still works. I'm gonna figure out how we can disable that, perhaps. Maybe shut it down for now. Also, if anybody gets a chance to fix this, like, control shift b thing not working right that um, but, uh, that's what i'll do next okay uh tell you what i probably should be able to commit this and then you can start working sounds good what in the world a clean all what is going on well it has a chat <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to go get this terminal authorized with GitHub, and then I will... Uh, Hold on, I'm, I'm contacting a VS Code expert. <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's Valkyrie. Oh, focus behavior. Specifies how to respond to focus requests from other participants. Just Accept or prompt. Yeah, I would change that then. Via settings and personal preferences or in session settings. Session settings, where are those? Oh, they're probably on the host. I really wish there was a cleaner way to do this. Then copy OAuth tokens around everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very silly. I think you can use an SSH key. I am not oh. dealing with that. Fair. Where is this again? Oh, mm -hmm. uh, authorizing with GitHub is just a pain. Oh. Consistently. Where's my phone? I think it's over there. Is it that one? I used to have a Pixel 4, so when I saw that phone, I was like, oh, how did my phone get here? This is the same phone, it's been 20 years. Let me see, what are session settings? One of these many new buttons they've added. That's already. Oh, that's platform. Oh, Wait, how do I? The new tokens are even worse. What's with them? Well, I can't. There's like no button to say give all permissions to this repo. Oh yeah, no, no. You have to. They're like temporary and only for certain. Yeah. Well, I'm okay with that, but I, there's no. Is there not? Permit access to repositories, but there's no, like, just give me it. Why does Jeff need to a to token? I don't need a token. This I is need a token. Terminal. Valkyrie oh. says at the bottom there should be a help. We'll get to that. Oh. We're not there right now. Oh. <laughs> um, My bad. You're talking about tokens. Scroll up. You might be able to get to legacy tokens. No, I can do that. I just wanted to... I, really I don't know how wanted to use to. the new tokens. Okay. Yeah. I don't... Whatever. I have not figured that one out yet. <laughs> I would love to be able to give repo-specific unlimited tokens. Sense, that yeah. would be... Uh, actually, I think that's all I need. Where'd it go? On Windows, it only works in WSL, so I just use WSL Git because I can't be bothered using the Git program. Mm -hmm. Git. Um, what yeah. is it? Yeah. Git credential yeah. store? Um, maybe. It may be all one word. Git credential manager. All one oh, word don't with even. hyphens. Mm -mm. No, that's not what I'm after. Oh, what are you looking for? Oh, the Get like config credential. Uh, let me see. Helper store. Yes. What are you saying, DJ? Okay, I got it. it. Great. 
Okay, so how do I make it so people can't summon my focus away? Josh knows. So, go to VS Code, Control, Comma. Shortcut to settings. Ah, uh, it works. Okay. Uh, go to, yeah, settings. Um, oh. You're gonna have to, that's why you need that shortcut. What is it? Tell me where it's I'm going. In the live chat settings is like a focus option. Where? Just type focus and it should be the first one, hopefully. You, oh you might want to stop the live yeah, share. Yeah, I would stop the it. share. <laughs> if uh, Friday the cat is going to be a pain in the ass. Okay, where is it? Uh, it's in extensions, Visual Studio Live Share. You're going to have to stop the share. No, I'm going to do this. Focus okay. behavior is yeah, right, right there. Prompt. There you go. Oh, that Friday the really cat, ignore. Too. Ignore. Welcome to the block list. Wait, Friday what? Ignore. 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 Hit the gear. Ig oh. Nope. Great. <laughs> I guess it's just going to be like that. You can probably just kick him. He's annoying. I, w I was also going to say. Wait, uh, somehow they took back over. What? What? I'm, I'm going to let you know. Uh, I'm hearing you can disable it via settings and personal preferences or session settings. Well, at I've disabled bottom, it. At the bottom, there should be a help and configure settings. And then I was just, Josh, mm. show him this. I was just sent a, a line of text there. Oh, well, that's, that's what we changed. Okay, gotcha. And it did not work. Oh, you may want to reset the... Check the, the pin. Yeah, make sure you... Okay, hopefully it shouldn't your focus again yeah anyway i pushed this to repo which okay. is rv003 usb gotcha and you can go check that out now i will go do that um totally random do you want to play with the well no i if i had more programmers i it would make more sense um i have a nixie tube uh, hooked up to these. I, I will that's say, cool. I, I am not much oh, of a programmer. That's really cool. I am not a much of a programmer, but I am a, an analog enthusiast. So Nixie tubes, I can actually appreciate. Well, I could send one with your friends, and or two, I guess. I have, I, I actually got another box from Ukraine, so or it's on the way. Can I have to see? Yep, it doesn't. I don't have it powered on right now. Sure. But, okay. Uh, where do I go to? I guess I'll check that. Yep. O three USB. Getting back to everything now. Oh, I can actually edit in Visual Code now. Okay. Um, oh, here it is. So what we want to do is we want to trigger the uh, we want to trigger the DMA on a timer interrupt, and. I want to enable the timer, turn on GPIOC, <laughs> delay, stop the timer, and set up the DMA again. What happens if I just reset up all of the DMA? I think I've managed to get the firmware made for this. Let me see if I can set this up to VS Code now. Just so that it does not do that thing. I think so, there, Josh. Yeah. And we need my laptop. That's the laptop spot. Yeah. Come on, dude. I'll your phone. Phone. Oh. There. Oh, that's why that won't work. Uh, we'll go put this. Well, let's just see what happens if we do this. Can I steal this? Yeah. Well, I might oh, need I it in a minute later. Do you have any of the USB, USB C to USB A? Oh, I may have one of those. It I might be in my one. bag at home. I get one with every new phone for some reason. Wow, everyone has to individually set this setting. <laughs> yeah, you might want to let them know this is yeah. craziness. Oh. That they have to, like, that all the, yeah. That's, that a, that's a poor default. 
I can understand why in a business setting some like corporate person mm -hmm. might not understand what's happening, but they won't notice the prompt. I wonder if there's some way for me to Friday the cat. Ah, whatever. Wait, how do I make this go away? No, go away. Chat? How do I make this go away? A close button on the tab. Yeah, it's oh. the tab. You can make terminals into tabs now. I always wanted a web browser with the layout of VS Code, like with the flexibility of it. I should probably go get some food since uh, we were talking about it. And also, yeah. it's mm. ten forty. Oh, we could also make rice. Mm. I have uh, lots of rice. What? I'm not a rice person. I also have. You might be this. Come oh look God. at my bag. Oh. I'm a very very poor eater. Poor. Poor. Oh, did I mention this already? I think I did. That's like an industrial bag of ABC alphabet spaghetti. Oh, yes, you did mention yes. this. Okay. Yeah, that is not me. Definitely not. <laughs> okay, anyway. So now our thing just free runs till the cows come home, so that's not right either. Hmm. I'm looking at the VS Code thing now. Who is TG? Do they know me? I can't see from the icon. What happens if I click this? Turbo God. I don't recognize them. Oh, you're not having a Mr. Creams Friday. I'm sorry, that's ugly. Well, it probably won't be good. Probably not good for you. I mean, the chocolate's definitely not good well, for you. Well, it's in a wrap bag, let's yeah. not say. He unwraps them with his little paw. I could go well, neat. The, Hello, TG. Get a Macos for you, if you want. Mm, I'd be down. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Little squeaks. That projector is comfy. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, it's unplugged. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be projecting a whole lot of cat butt. Oh, I also have ramen. I'd be fine with that, but Josh can only eat like five things. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just run to. I, I think I'll just run to McDonald's. <laughs> I'm, I'm, There's I'm also a Safeway. You could go to the grocery store. It's true. With lots There's of things in the grocery store. There is, but. I was almost tempted to bring all the bread and jam down. I have a oh, toaster. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I took that. That's fine. We'll just go out and eat. For some reason, I can't find lib Python. Why do you need Python? GDB do you needs want to it to run. It no, it doesn't. Huh. Well, I don't know why it's saying it does. Oh, um... Oh, it does if you're doing, like, the connection stuff. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. But, but I don't so, know why this is a problem, you can though. Literally I type, you definitely can have Python. Oh. You can literally type source and then, like, a We Python had a world where yeah. you could run... GDB without Python and somebody ruined it? Yeah. yeah. Why? So the whole like uh, way that we get <sighs> symbols for Proton and stuff uses wine reload, which is like a script that just like looks at prop maps and like, <sighs> figures stuff out. And that's a Python script that you can run inside of GDB. <sighs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was just about to mention that, yeah. We could have Oh. I have to type a command every time the program starts. It's great. Anyway. I don't know why, so... Do I have to downgrade Python to 3.10? <laughs> Welcome to the world of Python, where everybody says, oh yeah, that's fine, that's how you should do it. Yeah, I'm just get some food, because I'm going to yeah. go out. Okay. You want me to come with you? You can if you want, or you can stay yeah. here. Yeah, I'll trust you to get up the ladder by yourself. You need a buddy to talk. Okay. Alright. You could still spot me. Just, you don't have to go away. Alright. I'll be back. Whoop. Oh, there it is.
it does. Cool, okay. Oh, so I've got to keep fucking. You guys have fun. Yeah, this is getting stuck again. Why is this getting stuck? If it loops back around, it should be fine. Hmm. Oh, unless it's not having time to loop back around. No, it should, because I disable the timer. I want to reset. So you want to be able to run the debugger and then run it again without stopping the current one? No, I want it to stop the current one. When you hit F5. Gotcha. And I want this to work in Windows and Linux. I, forgot my I can do that, probably. Assuming it's possible. Oh, yeah. So, Charles, if we're going to McDonald's, do you want anything? No. Mm -hmm. Jeff, do you want anything? Um, uh, McDonald's? I've had, like, two burgers the past two days. Uh, I, yeah, I can do... Um, hmm. Can you just give me a plain cheeseburger? Okay. Do you have an ice cream or anything? Either of you? Or drink? The ice cream machine's probably broken. Okay. No. Do you want a drink? No. no. Okay. I don't think they sell anything without they sugar in it. two cheeseburgers, mm. actually. They're small. Well, they probably sell more than two, two cheeseburgers. Two cheeseburgers for you. Just, well, yeah, they're just the regular cheeseburger. Okay. Thank you. I wait a long time, it does work. I shouldn't need to wait any time. I should be able to cancel the DMA immediately and then keep going. Is there like a DMA reset bit? Is it like right cache? Uh, no. Oh. No, I know that. I did check that. Thankfully, this processor is dumb enough that right. it doesn't get in your way like that. Yeah, fair. Mm, here we go. There's a bunch of flags here. Incremental. Error. Yeah, it looks like it just has an off and on toggle. <sighs> Whatever, maybe we just use two interrupts. Can't hurt. Wanna bet? No. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that is just the right answer. I don't want to do such a heavy-handed thing, though, this early in the project. Like, that's like yeah. going for the gold, and then, like, instead of just, like, incrementally testing one thing and then the next. For sure. Hmm. Why doesn't this reset the DMA? We'll be right back. Put the camera on you for a hot minute. Howdy.
Okay, I'm back. Let's see here. So while I'm at this, let's close that. 36 viewers. Cool, cool. Um, number of transfers. This register going to be not when operating. Okay, well, let's take a look. Are we doing that? Yeah, we're doing that. Disable N. Set counter. Set emitter. Peripheral address, yeah, 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 memory address, this is all right, this is all correct. Why is this not resetting? Hmm. Enable the timer. You know what, whatever. I'm just going to go for the gold. Do it. Uh, DMA, GPIO. Let's see. DMA interrupt handler I really wanted this to be simpler but here we are um, So I'm not going to acknowledge the interrupt until the end of the frame. We do want circular. HTIE and C. Oh, 
I should not leave Nixie Keys at the edge of the desk where my cat can knock them off. <laughs> you are being a little turd Friday. Let's get the cat cam again. Hmm. So when we're done, we want to stop the timer. Oh, this is going to be really tricky. Well, it got stuck. Oh, can I, do I have to, I think I have to acknowledge the interrupt inside the interrupt, otherwise it'll just keep firing. Okay. Um, but what I want to do is I do want to turn it off. Nope, still bad. Somehow it's still running main though. What was pin four? Pin that was PD2, which is, so it is still running. Dang it. Oh, did I not turn off no, CTLR at zero? Hmm. Hmm. Is there a way to maybe flash it while he disconnected? Uh, you, uh, that's a long story. The answer is sort of yes, but I really don't want to do that. Okay. So you probably want to kill your current GDB and start Yes, going. yes. Gotcha. Uh, the problem is that, well, I mean, I guess that could be done, but it would be... I there's long uh, there's a few ways you could do it but like what I was thinking of doing here was just when you run a new instance it just kills your existing GDB that's the easiest way yes yeah yes and that's what I have that's what I set up was right. was to do that and that works on Windows oh um, where is and, it set up to do that uh kill GDB server or whatever oh. or kill it's like one of the tasks oh okay Make close WCH link flash. I don't see kill GDB server. Uh, it does run flash and GDB server. Make close CH link. So if you look in the make file for close oh, CH okay, link, that's that. how that happens. 
I had actually forgotten about that, so right. Sorry. No, all good. Oh, I think I have to enable the interrupt. Did I forget to enable the interrupt? No, I enabled the IRQ here. Yeah, all of this is enabled. Hmm. If we pause mini link, wouldn't that um I've had that I tried that once, but it uh it said the flash was still locked when I tried to flash again. It should to unplug me. Okay. That would be a different kind of bug that we should uh, investigate. I'll see if it still does that. It should always end up in a safe state if you right, do that. Right, right. Hmm. I see. So you prob what's probably... I see what's going on. Okay. It's killing the link, but not the DVD server. Yeah. Is it DDD on Windows or is it um, the Microsoft one? Um, uh, it's it's, GDB. it's GDB, Yeah. Okay. Is it going to be multi arch or just GDB? Uh, multi arch is the oh, and Windows. I don't, I think it's just GDB, but on on .exe. yeah. Gotcha. I'll just put that in the top of the... If you can make that as a any changes you make as a PR to like. Yeah, C32V003 sure. fun is kind of used by several people now, gotcha. and so I want to make sure I don't break their workflow. Although I do that sometimes anyway. I'm sorry, sure. BMX. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, BMX has been messaging. Oh, wow. Uh, Sam E, just FYI, those charts you made, that is really helpful. Uh, I'm nervous to show this to the main chat, but yeah, I, I'll, I guess I'll reply to all those folks later. Does the interrupt ever get fired? That's my question. Does this interrupt here ever fire? is not unlocked when uh, flash is not unlocked when killing the hmm. uh hold on uh Mossler, let's see i have an example here and it it does i don't think you need to acknowledge the dma interrupt i think that's special um i'm not sure about your error that's surprising to me That may take a little bit of debugging into mini ch link to figure out why that's crashing. By the way, I did write mini ch link, so any questions I can answer gotcha. them. I'm not sure if you can figure out what line of code that is. That would be I'll really cool. Yeah, for some reason though, the um, the IRQ Mossler, the the uh, this IRQ is just not firing. Um, the the DMA IRQ. Is there something else I need to do to enable it, I wonder, that I'm forgetting? Oh, that one worked. Hmm. 
Did I really try running this without that com with that commented out? That and maybe had to kill GDB first. Hmm. Maybe. Is this is this working? Well, that's weird. I don't know why that happened there, but. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, this is wonderful. Okay, so let me tell the chat what just happened here. Uh, so we have this signal here that goes low. So one of our pins goes low. And then we have a bunch of DMAs being read in by the DMA. And then a DMA interrupt go boop, saying, hey, I got some DMA. Um, go process it and then some more DMAs and then boop, which means, hey, I got some DMA. You can keep on going. Um, yeah, so that actually worked. Now, I wonder what happens. What if I make this really tiny? Can I do this really fast? So if I set instead of 128, what if I make that a total of eight? Will that work? Because that we might be able to get away with some nifty tricks with then. Let us see. Actually, what I really want to do is I want to say build okay so now what's happening let's see if this is right Ooh, this is looking good okay so check this out what happens is this line goes low we we get in the 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 DMA starts sampling DMA sampling, DMA sampling, DMA sampling. We have four, four DMA slices, and now our interrupt gets fired. Okay, which means we can process one byte of data to get out all, or sorry, one word of data to get out all four bit states of the USB. And we could figure out what we want to do here. We could do whatever we want. And then we do it again, and we do it again. So, and right now I'm just exiting after the very first one, but we could be intelligent. Okay, now let's make sure that the times that these things sample at are good. So here, boof, that's kind of late, boof, that's kind of late. All of these are kind of late. Um, hmm. This is also a little bit of a train wreck because we're like in the middle of it and then the timer interrupt keeps firing, so it's a little bit hard there. So none of that's gonna be reliable, but let's let's check out the next Oh yeah, here we go, the next packet. So it looks like we're we're firing pretty late in the frame twice. Let's see, what about this one? Are we firing late? Yeah, we are firing very late. So we want to try to do something to fire that earlier. Um, maybe we want to go on any transition chain. No, because it is that is the right transition. So why, I keep all tabbing the wrong code. Um, okay, so in here, IRQ handler, we're not doing very much. I'm not sure why that's taking so very long. What happens if we just set this higher? No mic. Wait, no mic? You can't hear me? Okay, good, good, good. 
now it's even later in the cycle. So that was the wrong direction. I'm gonna have to just close that that example because I keep all tabbing to it for some reason. Okay. Um, why is this not working well? What is? The debugs help file in your repository. I don't yes, know. I have never figured out how to get it to do the debugger without that, without saying that. Huh. So if you know of the right profile, because I tried Googling for that and I could not find the right profile. Interesting. So please, please the find it. Please. The CPP debug, but the one that's non-debug, the run only one. Yes, I would really like if you if, if you know more you clearly know more than me about this stuff. So any help is is greatly appreciated. I see cuz you're trying to run no debugger that's been this one. Correct. Yeah, there's one where you just want, like, I just want a terminal, and there's the other one where I want to run the debugger. I think it'll probably have to be a task if you just want a terminal. Or you could keep using Node. <laughs> um, Maybe we can just look at this code and figure out why it's so slow. I have literally no idea why that's so slow. That looks like that should be pretty fast. CTLR1 is Tim Sin. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six cycles. Whatever, let's go shove this in the, the fast RAM. Are you kidding me? That is still so long. 500 nanoseconds to answer an interrupt.
Whatever, this might be okay. We might be able to get this to work. Unless if there was a way to force it when it first hits. Ooh, maybe. Uh, ooh, that's what I want to do. Yes. Is there a way with timer? Tim one CNT. Let's reset that to zero. Still lame. Hmm. Wait, what if I set it to FF? Or 20. Let's do 20. I just find it so hard to believe that it would be that bad. Hole. Okay, so we don't want to do that. What we really have here now is un 32t of 2. Neat, okay. B6, B6, A6, B6, 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 B6. What is B6? So this is should be GPIOD. And it should be bits three and four. So B6 is, I hate B, I never remember B. It's like one, zero, one, one, and then one zero one one and then zero one one zero. That's weird. That's not right at all. B6, 
he should be did I miss type something? One six A four B six A four A six B four B six let's let's stop using port D to do fancy stuff right now and only do this debug stuff. Let's actually just extract the right values. Oh, wait, this might be right. Okay. I think all I'm seeing mostly is just the EOPs, but okay. So what I'm looking at this here is the the values of the I/O inside the packet at uh, specific intervals. Um, hold on, at specific intervals, and uh, one point five every one point five of a megahertz kind of thing. I'm not familiar with the bit ordering though. I was expecting it to be like, I guess I'm just confused because I, I don't understand why it would be one zero 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 one zero is the first word because it should start the DMA after the line is already low. Big Endian port on little Endian device? I mean, maybe, but it's like in the middle. I was expecting it to be on one end or the other. But it is the right number of bits because an EOP is where both bits are zero. Let's make sure these aren't getting reset or something. Or making sure that they are getting reset so that we are not just having some like weird artifact. Oh heck, let's also just turn that off. Okay, well maybe that's a little bit intense, but Oh. 
Yeah, I, I fought with it, but I'm also not good at this, so... It's just a very obtuse system for some reason. So these are the packets that are coming through. Well, that is not good. That is NG. So some of these, these are the EOPs here. Some of them are coming through nice and clean. Well, I, not, none of them are coming through nice and clean, but they're coming through with different values. Let's at least see if we can get, if we can get some consistency, that's sufficient for me for right now. Uh, so in order to be consistent, what we're hoping to do is let's just try plus, let's offset it by 16. So we'll try sampling in the middle of the phase. So we're going to miss the first one, but that's fine. Make clean all monitor. Let's see these. No, it's still drunk. This is not good. Oh, we have returned. Oh my god, look at the cat. Where is he? Right between the laptops. Oh. I dare say I might get bested by this. I don't know that I'm going to succeed here. This is terrifying. Why? I think the cat smells food. Yeah. Why is this so wrong? This might not work. If this data is that janky already, it means that we can't actually sample the DMAs. Absolutely. So we might be back to a timer capture mode. I don't have the fortitude to go through with a timer capture mode. I'm going to keep, keep debugging this tonight. If, if this ends up being a dead end, then I'm going to end the stream and I will try timer capture. No, no. No. The what? There's no McDonald's near here. Oh, yeah. What could I be doing wrong? I mean, the Kirkland. We got the Kirkland signature McDonald's. Mm. So, I want to make sure that the DMA is fully reset once we're done. How do we do that? I know why it was sandwiched, because by the time our interrupt fires, it is already, like, like the timer has already advanced the DMA, like, pointer one more, because our interrupt took so long to, to go in. So we have to find a way to reset, can I just toggle it off and on?
gosh, this is the first fruit I had since we had our walk. There's one in there that's mine. How do I know? It'll say there's a bunch. It's only ketchup, onions, and lettuce on the label. Oh, uh, okay. Ooh, that's interesting. Why in the world do these now appear in Word 2? Yep, that's fine. This one here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just reload all of the DMA. I'll throw this back in the bag. Oh yeah, if I control C it closes the terminal. My cat loves that cat food. It's basically the same taste receptors as us. Man, it makes me so sad that you can't cycle count this thing. That would have been so much easier. Who wouldn't love Spocky's dog for real? So, what's the DWT counter? Are you talking about uh, psych count, uh, the uh, CSR for psych count, which is required for all Risk Five things to have the CICSR extension? Because if you're talking about that, there doesn't exist on this part. DWT is the closest thing we have to, or sorry, psych count. I think is the closest th thing we have to what you're thinking about is DWT, but maybe I'm wrong. Could you imagine if we could, if we could just trigger a DMA off of an external like mm. thing? Yeah. Is that really? Do you not get like an interrupt when you have? You get an interrupt. Right, but you can't. You can't like wire it to the DMA. Like you, you can get you the can interrupt. Do a round trip, right? What? Can you do a round trip from the interrupt or no? What do you mean a round trip? Like on the interrupt trigger. The the DMA stuff from that side? That's what I'm doing. I'm saying go. Oh, okay. But the problem is I would have to, like, I want to say go and have it just go brrrr. Right, yeah. So.
now it seems that I'm just hitting it way too late all the time or something. I don't really know. Sorry if you're hearing the cracking noise, Josh. <laughs> the jaw crack. I've lived with it my whole life. Oh, I thought that was like the cardboard or something. Didn't realize your jaw making that noise. That's interesting. So here's the confusing part here is this would mean, did I get my numbers backwards? No, zero, one. Okay, so it's like the EOP here is, wow, that's a lot of printfs. Um, the EOP is in the second word, but like I'm not triggering until then. So like here is an EOP. It should be here and here is where the data goes. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, n bits. Oh. Side note, I just realized why when I was looking at the those two bytes, why when I was looking at them from main, uh, it was like only one bit was set and it was always the, the wrong one. And it's because if you count these, it actually loads one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bits worth of DMA in. Hmm. Which would explain why, if I'm doing the right thing, it actually overwrites it. So this, let's see if. I think this might actually be working, but we don't see it. We'll know if this is correct because this here would then display the right thing. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So now it kind of makes sense. So the first bits here are. Yeah, I, I have one. Uh, no, no, I'm not running. I've reversed, reverted. I'm not not running from RAM um, anymore. And I do have a one wait state on the processor, but I did find out that running from RAM really doesn't improve things very much at all. So, um, side note, let me try disabling fast interrupts. this cursed line of code here. C to A female. Yeah. I have, yes, I have the ability to, I have it, it's janky, but it should work for you. Here.
No, it's still roughly the same. I'm surprised that it makes that much of a difference. Guys, read tweets so fast. I've already seen that read. Oh, okay. I think this is good though. So I'll show you guys what I mean is um, if I unplug and I plug in the USB, you see a bunch of things fly by here. And um, so this is like data. Um, actually, this is really cool. This is a preamble right here. So this is uh, JK, 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 uh, and then up. But like normally what you you have is this, which is, and I guess it's like LSB first. It's loading the LSBs into RAM, and then it's loading the MSBs here into RAM. And so this is actually what's getting, this This might work. Um, uh, so what what actually happens is, this gets called in here, and so our halfway word, it reads out DMA buffer zero and stores that. So yeah, so I'm actually able to process the data like as it's rolling in. Um, one, two, three, four. Skip. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five hit. One, two, three, four, five hit. Or one, two, three, four hit. Okay. Yeah, I think this this might work. Um, this is this is possible now. Um, this is actually has the added benefit that user code will continue to operate even while handling USB, uh, like in the middle of a USB transaction. Um, so we can do a few really fun things now. Uh, we can. Uh, so actually, I want to do a few things. I want to, anytime we spend inside the interrupt, I want to watch it. Um, but we can do some things. So for one, we can say uh, if, and actually it would be based on state. So So close to getting this thing working, but for some reason it won't accept custom GDP command. I normally actually there's a, a pile of programmers that are right now in Hong Kong that are just waiting for DHL okay. to come I'll here. Just go to Hong Kong real quick then and get one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so I, I can, if you are curious, I can totally hand them off to whoever if you are interested in this. This is kind of fun. It's, okay. The VS Code stuff is not, but the <laughs> programming. <laughs> I need to get my 307 working, but I just have another 10 working to it. There is that one guy now uh, who is just absolutely like tearing into it. Mm -hmm. uh, BMX, are you on? Are you watching, or are you not watching the the live stream?
Anyway, we have handle word. So what we want to do is we want to have a, a local state estate. Uh, and then we want to restore the state when we're done. If state is equal to zero, oh, local state is equal to zero, and well, actually, let's just switch. Servers as sub process of GDB, I suppose, is the question. Can I have it? Yep. I'm trying to think what the best way to process through this is in here. Night duck. I mean, I don't know. Things are starting to look up, so I'm getting kind of excited here. Like, nice. we have, nice. like, data piped in, and we have, like, yeah. Like, things are starting to actually, like, look up here, so. Uh, I think I'll keep the, the video up for later. What does VOD stand for? Video, video on, on demand. demand. Why do they call it that? Twitch. No, it's from the... TV, TV era. era. Well, yeah, it's 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 Twitch trying to be TV. Yeah. Because they're Twitch TV. Because it used to be it's like that, it's something that, would air it on probably, live TV. It's probably it a holdover from watch. Justin TV. Oh man, that was that yeah. little purple gorilla was <laughs> so cool. I can't get 
Okay, this is totally an SE0. Why is this not? Why is it oh oh one oh oh what? Wait, which one? Uh, Dr. Acula? What what is what did you note? Or what are you seeing? Actually, if you have stuff up and running and you're curious, I can give you the, the that thing has a hard time with the Nixie tube, but I can give you the Nixie tube thing. It's a little bit harder to, and tricky to get running, but uh, if you're curious to play with it, like I'm, that means I can, here you go. Um, I did have a whole YouTube video on that if you were curious, so. I don't know why this code is not working. So if I'm in here, I should be going through all of the sections of the word. And if I have anywhere the whole 8-bit thing is 0, then it should reset it to 0. Uh, hang on. So when you run RV003 USB.elf, is that running off of the this? Uh, what? The RV003 USB.elf file. That's the file that's flash. Yeah, that's the one that's set in your. Oh, that's the one that I'm working on right now. Does that run? That runs on there. No, it runs on here. No, it runs on this board. Oh, it runs. Yeah, there. Sorry. Yes. 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 Um. Okay, so I guess it's GBZ, that's the one thing that. I'm just going to add another camera, because why not? Now that my computer is not murdering itself. <laughs> 
slow in some way. Apparently I can't do that. <laughs> it is not not waking up. Oh, that is fine. We don't need it. Sorry about that. We should be back. actually worked. We have uh, several cams up and running now. Now people can get a close-up view of me laying on your floor at all times. I'm trying to obscure that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they as uh, <laughs> the reaction of like Oh, there's just like a dead body back there, huh? Okay, so what I want to know is in here, why is this sometimes not right? Or why is this not, like, triggering? You know what? This is a perfect opportunity to use the debugger. I want to set the interrupt in here. Okay. What is word? Okay, well at least that whatever that was didn't Uh, but I want to do this as a hex view. <laughs> How do I view his hex? Oh, are you trying to print something? I want to show this as hex. Did you have the GDB console on or, or not? Uh, I just have watch right now. Oh. It you says... Like the GDB console is like P slash X and then the variable name. Wait, maybe I can? Oh. P space word slash X. Hmm? Wait, P word X. No, no, p slash x space word. Oh, p slash x word. Is that actually the GDB console? No, it's not. No. But why? Is it output? What? Output? No, no, no. Is output that? Or not? Is no. the terminal that? No, no, the terminal is, is not, definitely not that. Hmm. How do I? Surely there is a way to view this as hex. Maybe you can just do bracket. Mm, never mind. Wait, what do you mean? No, never mind. I was just. Yeah. Um. You know what? Whatever. Copy value. <laughs> Open GDB and then do p slash x of that oh I know what happened it's never zero 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 I have to or it with the mask okay well then that's not that bad uh, pound define um, USB mask is zero x eight one eight one eight one eight one eight okay there we go well I, I used the debugger oh I figured out how to do it what so you know what you have um, words there do word comma h. Hmm? Word comma h in the watch window. Oh, nice. Ta-da. Oh, 
I think it's working. Okay. Let's go. It's not working. Is the chat really that dead? Oh, wait, no, he said something else. In filtering data at switch statement. Oh, that was a long time ago. That was back when I was still doing it the other way. Oh, I see, it's because I never hit an SE zero, so it keeps going, that's fine. Let's see here. So this reads one, two, three, four. It hits an SE zero and is like, okay, I'm done. I'm out. Peace out. Okay, so this is pretty cool. And over here, it's buzzing along. Bzz, hits an SE zero. And then aborts. Ooh, that's going to be hard to turn around fast. Oh, no. Well, this is going to be painful. Maybe the answer is after we hit an SE0, we just keep listening for a little while, I guess. Oh no, that won't work. Hmm. Oh, that is going to be hard. Actually, no, this just isn't gonna work. Look at, uh, so this here shows how long it takes to process one of those interrupts. Or this, sorry, each one of these bumps shows the amount of time it takes to process four time slices of data. One, two, three, four, the interrupt fires. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, time slices come in while I'm still processing the first four. This is a disaster. And I don't even know how this could ever work. I, I literally don't even. We're so far behind. Oh. Why is this That's so right. slow? Is this just all going to have to be an assembly? It feels like everything is half the speed that it needs to be to work. Okay, I don't think this watch Jason thing can be done. Wait, wait really? Me? Yeah. Are you serious? I am. I, there must be a way somehow, but like, wait, wait. I can't get it to close the currently running pre launch task and start a new one. And I'm trying to do it with GDB commands. I'm trying to do it with, like, fiddling with the task. You can't just call and kill that now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I was running kill all as one part of the... You can't call kill dash nine because you can't rerun the... Pre you can't run any task. Right. You can only run GDB. That's <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, um... There... It's... It's nonsense.
we just have to quick stop, I guess. Um, okay. You were, you're, uh, the bottom half of you is on screen. Oh, yeah. No, I'm aware. Ah. <laughs> uh, Um, Let's see if I can figure out something, but I don't think it's gonna. This is so painful. Why is this so slow? Is that really enough to fight you? No. no. I can't run extra commands from NGDB while it's in the remote, because, like, I have to leave remote to run make. And I can't make VS Code. I don't know why it doesn't. Okay, so actually we can do a fun thing here. If, oh, but what if they're both set? Oh. Oh. I don't know why this is so slow. Is it processing two at the same time, maybe? We could find out. Wow, this is painful. It takes so long to process this data. So the thing I'm running into right now is I think I'm going to stop this in like 10 minutes here uh, is I have the DMA set up so it's able to sample slice 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 it calls an interrupt because it's like hey I have all the data cool 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 we call the interrupt the interrupt starts it takes 700 nanoseconds for it to like get off the ground or something then it it then it services those it starts servicing those four bytes one two three four then it takes another 1.8 microseconds for it to finish that like i'm sure it's doing something silly uh, surely it's doing something silly like this is just c code but i can't believe the compiler is that bad like no way. Oh, it's like compiling it like weirdly inlined. Oh, it's 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 some good flags. Okay. 
Mm. It's got all the, the all the good ones. The fun and safe Mac optimization. Wait, what? It's a long-standing joke about how it's hyphen f unsafe math optimizations. Oh, yes, it's just fun like fun safe. roll loops. Yeah. Fun safe. Yeah. All the, the good things have fun. Yes. Fun safe math operations. I'd never seen that one. I've only ever done fun roll loops. Um. This is really slow. I and also so there's this other problem which I don't know how I would ever address which is it looks like after it sends oh actually let's turn on the USB protocol analyzer got the restart button to work however when you stop the program it's gonna um, run a new instance mm. okay so here's here's the deal it looks like the host will sometimes send EOPs and then immediately send another message and there's just nowhere near gonna be enough time for us to like turn things around after that EOP and figure out what to do like like because we our, our synchronization is fixed if we do this approach without the timer capture um so what would happen is we would start sampling here and then we would sample off um right here and we would start sampling off like 1.5 uh like 1.5 1, 1 megahertz samples at each one of these and then we get over here to this eop and we go sample sample and we maybe like do one, two, two more or something. We're like, oh, we should stop. And then the thing's still gonna keep going because it takes us a little while to stop it. And then it's gonna get all the way down here. And then it's gonna go fire, it's gonna already have fired the, or here, here actually, it's, it's over here. It fires the timer interrupt. I mean, I don't know, maybe that's enough. Cause like somehow it over on this side, it, yeah, I don't, actually, I don't know how that's possible. Somehow it's synced back up. I literally don't know how that was possible, but I, I just don't know how this is going to work. <sighs> yeah, I know I could use error states to slow things down, but I don't want to. I want this to be like a halfway decent stack if I can make it one. It's going to be so hard. I did not appreciate how fast the ESP8266 was when I wrote its its stack. Oh, okay. We have something called deploy steps. That might be. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, I'm sorry that we weren't able to get this further along. Um, I'll probably make the, the video available, but um, I don't know. I may take it down at some point. Uh, this was a lot of work and really painful, and I'm just frustrated that at the end of it, we don't have anything to show. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for coming out. Have a good evening, everyone. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye.